Hey there boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today the Duff Dog and I are gonna see if we can't sneak a six liter LS into my dad's 1966 Buick Skylark that his grandfather bought brand new. And it's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> That's right, we're doing an LS swap. I'm doing it for my dad. It's a surprise. So let's cut back to the original footage when I snuck down there on Father's Day, told him that I was borrowing his car to put brakes in it while he redid his original engine. So the story on this car is his grandpa, my great grandpa, bought it brand new in 1966. I think he's got the paperwork on it, the day that he bought it actually. He passed away pretty early on. So my great grandma had it. And then my dad's uncle got it. And he had it for quite a few years. And then my dad got it. He probably had it for three, four years. And then the rear main seal went out, right? Rope seal. And so we took the engine out and found out the cam bearings were bad and it snowballed. This was 2005, so 17 years ago. The engine's all bored out 30, 10, 10 over. It's a 300 V8. It's kind of like a baby nail head, but they don't actually call it a nail head. Dad's got it all back together. Finally, it's got oil pumps packed full of grease, everything. He's cleaning up stuff. I think he's just gotta put the intake manifold on it yet. The original intake manifold is cracked. It's a two barrel. He does have a four barrel, but then we'd have to find a different air cleaner and a carburetor and linkage. So we're just gonna put it back to the two barrel stock. Two speed automatic? Correct. It's a four door, it's a hard top, it's a Skylark. He's got the original steel wheel somewhere and hubcaps. I got these torque thrusts when I was in college. I think they're 15s. Again, they're probably 15, 20 years old. The tires are probably at least 15 years old, if not more. Body's pretty good. It's got a little rust in the dog legs. Interior's pretty nice from what I remember. There's a couple of rips in the seat. Yeah, he's got the power steering pump cleaned up, the alternator, all that stuff. He's, he's way more organized than me. Look at this. Use your beer box divider and then label where all your bolts go and then clean each one up individually. And then get yourself a lift and then put a clothesline on it so you can hang your clothes from it. Here's a spare engine. That's what he got the intake manifold off of. We boned out a 66 Buick Skylark station wagon. And so yeah, uh, we always, you know, if you can find extra parts, we didn't know if we were gonna need anything, but we picked them up. This car had power brakes. Power steering. This car had power brakes though. We got the power brakes off of it. Oh, yeah. And your car's got power steering. Both had power steering. That's a 64, which is the first year in the 300 four barrel but you have to have a different intake manifold gasket the gaskets are even different between two and four barrel huh correct but i don't want to buy another carburetor and linkage and uh air cleaner and all that good stuff for it but i've got it and these are fairly hard to find and it's got single exhaust on it you can leave single exhaust or does it need exhaust or it's got single now and it's going to have single until i get into the exhaust shop well, let's take the cover off for the first time. Well, you cleaned it a few years ago. He had a visitor and washed it off for the first time in who knows how many years. I think the plates are 05 because you got to have a vehicle has got to be 40 years old to get Pioneer plates in North Dakota. So 2006, he could. So if you had drove for one more year, you could add Pioneer plates. We never did drive it with these wheels. Just since it's been a roller, we've had those wheels on it. Single tone. No vinyl top. Do you know what the Rainbow Division of Veterans was? That was the Grandpa's division in World War I. I'm guessing this is a pretty bad spot for him to rot out, isn't it, on all Chevelles? Yeah. So this is basically a Chevelle with Buick badging. What's the Oldsmobile version and the Pontiac version? Pontiac could be like a Tempest or a Le Mans. No, Tempest Le Mans. And then the Cutlass. Cutlass. Or F85. F85. I guess this is where we store our clothes baskets. It does have a like a tritone interior, kind of a gray, dark blue, light blue. Uh, automatic, like I said. Otherwise, pretty standard. It's got a heater and an AM radio. 
Doesn't have the mirror on the other side. Doesn't have door edge guards. Well, it does have door edge guards. Doesn't have the hand guards. No AC, no power seat, no power windows, no tilt wheel. It's pretty plain Jane. Sam bought her new and didn't uh, splurge a whole lot. So this was probably the last car that Sam bought new, you suppose? Yep. 67 he died. We do have pictures of this parked in front of my grandparents' house that I actually own now. Those are the factory hubcaps. They're all in pretty good shape. It did have 14s on it. Here's the factory spare, and spare wheel cover, the jack. It's all been there in there. Like I said, it's been in the family ever since it's been new. It was sold new at Rains. Is that how you're pronouncing it? Rainus? Rainus. Rainus in Lisbon, which is no longer a dealer. I think they got bought out by RDO at the end off it. But there's no longer a car dealership in Lisbon anymore. Burbies was the Ford dealer at the end. A little surface rust on the lip. These are made out of pot metal, so paint just doesn't like to stick to them. I think there was a couple of whiskey dents in there. A little surface rust. Are you going to paint the car or do any repairs? Drive it as is. Yeah, see down here in the dog leg, everything comes off the wheel and sits down there and has no way to get out. So, so right now it's got stock. Wow, well, they're probably like a 10 inch drum all the way around. So we're gonna go discs, front and rear, and a power booster and all that good stuff. Wheel got the uh, corner of the garage with that, I'm guessing. It's always the passenger side because you can't see over there apparently. No T3 headlights in it anymore. Nope, they've all been replaced. I think this fender isn't, yeah, the, this fender's really good. It's only the other fender. So that's kind of neat. I don't know if it, the camera will pick it up, but it says uh, aligned at Anderson Body Shop, Foreman, North Dakota. That's just up the road from the old shop. I actually own that building now, so pretty cool that that's on there. I've never seen one other than the one that's on this car. It's too bad it isn't just a little bit more legible. Neil Anderson, he's was the owner, owned that for many years. He was the mayor of Foreman for many years. He's no longer with us, but he's a pretty good guy. So we're gonna get this thing out of the corner here. And we're gonna get her loaded up on the trailer, get her to the new shop. Oh look, he's even got notes. You're missing a small spring clip for the electric high idle switch and a ground that goes to the bottom of the alternator mount. You're more organized than me. Not much. It's, it's not saying much. What else you got over here? A flathead, 49 to 53, That's 8BA. Oh. That's a 50 Mercury. Oh, it's a Merc, an 8CM, and you use it to store bags. Yeah, for my burnables. Oh, sorry, Greta, we, we don't recycle, we burn our trash. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Ox wall. That was in the trunk of this car. Each ox wall tool in this set has been made by Master Craftsman, the ideal set for home, office, car, factory. Use this box. It has been designed to hold your tools neatly. The colored tray is made of permanent plastic. Keep it in the glove compartment, in the drawer, or the toolbox. Your tools will always be handy. Was it just the box? The tools weren't there? There was tools in there, too. Oh, that's cool. They even show the picture of their modern factory that produces the finest tool for your needs. A tool for every purpose. Had to be from the mid to late 60s. Well, I'm sure it was after this car was made. I'm sure somebody will comment down below the history of the ox wall and how their dad worked there or how it was next door or if they have ox wall tools. That's pretty neat. That's pretty neat. If somebody wants that, they can have it. Otherwise, I'll burn it. Oh my gosh. Comment down below if you think you need this thing. If you save it. We better throw it in the car then. Yeah, if somebody's got a kit and they're just missing the lid, that'll seal the deal. Well, what do we need? A floor jack? What kind of goodies? There's gonna be some dust bunnies under there, huh? Two or three years of dog here. Yeah, that's the joys of having a dog. He's got a Springer named Poppy. I've got a Brittany named Duffy, and they're out chewing on each other's ears. And floor jacks are the most loudest, annoying tool in the whole entire shop. But yeah, having a dog in the shop, you get dog hair under everything. That's why you keep everything on wheels, so you can move it clean under there. Which we don't do. I don't do. He does. Well, we got it out of its resting place, but it's been there for quite a while. Made a little mess with the power steering. There you can see all the uh, poppy hair everywhere. It looks like he was storing some 40, 41 Ford pickup springs underneath it. Sorry about the mess. It happens. Oh, it's Father's Day, so. I'm making him cook me a steak. 
I'll bring your car back in better shape than I found it, hopefully. All right, it's uh, blazing 93 degrees here today. And this is at six o'clock at night, so she's even warmer than that. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the door and roll it outside real quick, like try to keep it cool in here. It's about 77 degrees in here, no AC. Just got the big box fan running. All right, let's get her outside and get her on the trailer. I wonder if it's even got brakes right in meow. Single reservoir fruit jar. You think it's got brakes still? I haven't been in there and stepped on them. Oh, I'd be surprised if it does. Oh man, still does. Perfect. Did you go the, through the transmission or just put seals in it? Just flush the torque converter? Seals, filter. No rebuild or nothing? No. Well, we had the torque converter was drilled in, flushed. Corey down at automatic transmission and gear did that. Yeah, like I said, this is a manual brake car, the parts car. Had power brakes, did have power steering. Looks like they had an inline heater for the uh, block heater. Tank heater, they call it. Tank heater. We're probably not hooking that back up. All right, let's get her outside. First time seeing daylight in, I don't know, close to 10 years. All right, just got to tie it on the back. You're a lot of help, Duff, thanks a lot. All right, all tied down. Last time you'll see your car for a while. Looks like we got the nerd herd helping out today. Poppy, you're all wet too. This looks pretty good in the daylight. Yeah, I wonder if we can find a date code on these things. 215.65, not near enough tire. Oh, we we'll put them on the wrong side too, they're rotational. 32 of 06. So those tires are 16 years old. Probably don't want to be running those. A door dinger there. Yeah, super nice car. Lil took good care of it. There's part of the, that might even rub off there. All right. We're gonna go eat some steaks, cool off by the lake. And then we're gonna take the tow pig home. Get this thing unloaded. What do you say, Duff? You want a steak? Yeah? Go for a swim in the lake? Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, let's go. So here we are, like a month or so later, back at our new shop. If you want to know about the new shop, go check it out on the second channel, more and more ski repair. Had a little help getting this thing in here, getting the hood off it. I got this LS and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it. This is a six liter out of a 2001. Yep, 2001, three quarter ton. Extended cab long box, had 140,000 miles in November of 19. Uh, local guy bought it brand new, passed it down to his kids. They wrecked it, I bought it from him, parted out the pickup, got the engine, here it is. So, uh, we robbed the injectors out of it for that thing. So we need to get dad some new injectors. We've been working with the good folks at Holly. So we got all kinds of good Holly stuff. We got a Terminator setup, we got a oil pan, we got engine mounts, we got cast iron headers, we got radiator fuel tank, we got everything we're gonna need, hopefully. Not everything, we got a lot of stuff. The LS swap, a 1966 Buick Skylark, cause this is pretty much the same chassis as a 1966 Chevelle. So we just opened up the catalog, got Chevelle stuff. We got a new oil pan gasket from Rock Auto, uh, LS oil pan, low profile one, we got these Hooker headers from Holly, and then we got a rear main seal because while we're in there, we might as well make the six liter, not a six leaker. And then I'm sure there's some other stuff we're gonna find along the way. I think we're gonna put some new oxygen sensors in. Like I said, we're gonna have to stick some new injectors in or clean those ones up. Maybe we'll even put some new plugs and wires. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I've had this thing, like I said, November of 19, I took it out, so just about two years. I made this, you can buy these carts for pretty cheap, but they don't come with wheels. So I welded some wheels on it. Turns out those little plastic wheels, they don't like great big LS engines. Also, my engine stand was full with a 3D9 Pontiac. So I bought myself one of these Crankomotive engine stands. I don't know, it's not called Crankomotive. It's a, it's a Yako thousand pound. 
uh, funny story is that one ripped uh, my finger off one night. So that thing's on the naughty list. So I've always wanted one of these. Figured this is a good excuse for it. So let's pull the manifolds off. See how many broken bolts we got. Oh, there it looks like one, unless I took that out one out. And yeah, enough yakking. I already put a flex plate on it. We're gonna put a 4L60E in it. It's already been rebuilt by Corey at Automatic Transmission and Gear. So we gotta put a flex plate off a 5.3 so that it'll bolt to a 4L60E. Because the six liters come with a 4L80E. Problem with the 4L80E is they don't fit in the transmission tunnel real well. Also, we need to take that throttle pedal out, put one out of a Camaro in there, because I guess they work better with the cable setups. I don't know. Six cylinder Camaros had a cable. V8s had this, a throttle rod like this. So I think we got a pedal for a six cylinder Camaro somewhere. We're gonna make our power steering work. He does have power brake stuff. So I don't know if we'll get that on there. We do have new exhaust from Hooker as well. I just really like saying Hooker. Anyway. Yeah, I get a little profile oil pan so we can clear the cross member. So I think that's the first thing we're gonna do is strip these manifolds off, get them out of the way. We'll put our headers, not headers, cast iron headers, manifolds that are for this swap. We'll put those on when we get it in there. We gotta get that oil pan swapped. So let's do it. Get to it. Duff, he's hanging out outside in the shade somewhere because he's smart, let's be honest. And I'm not. Look at this, this is like a freaking 60s GM dealership, 66 Buick, 60 Cadillac, 63 Buick. We got a 68 Chevelle on the trailer. Before I pull this manifold off, anybody who's familiar with the LS series of engines knows that this back bolt is almost always snapped off. So that's pretty awesome that that one isn't broken unless I already fixed it. Definitely not, because that one's broken and I haven't fixed it yet. So we're gonna probably have to fix a couple of those and those suck because I suck at them. Looks like the hold down clamp for the dipstick is busted. Also looks like there's oil in it, so now would be a good time to drain that. And to probably order a new dipstick. What's thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy? <laughs> Well, she's a little sludgier inside than I was hoping to find. Routine oil changes. Ugh. Yeah, I'd, I'd stick my light in there and my finger and show you, but oh wait, here we got a battery hold down bracket. All right, let's see what we got. Oh, it ain't as deep a sludge down there as I thought. Anyway, there's some sludge in there. These oil pan gaskets are like rubber impregnated, so you could probably reuse them, but it'd be a real pain to have to swap out later. So we're doing it the right way because it's dad's. The new Holly pan comes with the appropriate pickup tube and probably some instructions. Oh my gosh. It even comes with a oil filter block off plate, some fittings some destructions, and it even comes with that O-ring. All right, believe it or not, we read Holly's destructions. So I'm gonna go through them. Look at how pretty this thing is. She's nice. So we gotta put this windage tray in there. Uh, you gotta use some blue Loctate on those bolts. It, it gives you all the torques for these. I'm not gonna tell you what to torque them to. Those four bolts, uh, these two screws, Hold the pickup tube in there. It only had one from the factory, but Holly goes all out, puts two in there. And then we gotta put this in there for the uh, oil filter adapter. That thread's in there. There's a block off plate that goes there. That was for like oil cooler lines or something silly. So we put that on there. So yeah, that's all the hardware. They say to use oil on that seal, but we're gonna use Vaseline. My great grandma's name is Lil. I think that's what we're gonna call this car. I think that's what dad calls it too. We got Lil up in the air, short for Lillian. We are gonna pull this single exhaust off because that's not gonna cut it for our LS. And I think we're gonna drop the fuel tank out and we'll see what that looks like inside. See if it's worth saving. We got a new fuel tank to put in here that's set up for an in-tank pump so you don't have to hear it and it runs in the fuel so it stays nice and cool. Perfect, right? I wonder if dad put some new shocks on it. 
probably just got a tiny little 10 volt i'm guessing 308 gears so overdrive it's gonna freaking love it and then while we got it up in the air we should pull these old engine mounts off and we'll get our new ones ready to go on there and and other things and we can maybe get this throttle pedal out too maybe we'll see and this shift linkage might be in the way so we might take that off as well Look at how freaking nice the floors on this thing are. You can see all the great grandpa Sam, he must have requested the undercoating option. See a lot of that under there. But this car definitely saw its fair share of gravel. But yeah, oh, is that a build sheet? Probably not. Probably just some random piece of paper that is not legible. Dang it, nothing cool. That stuff that's in there, it smells real bad. Lucky you folks don't have smell of vision Don't worry, we're gonna dispose of that properly, Greta. How dare you! So, let's go get our new tank. See how we get that up there. Well, before we do that, let's get this exhaust out of the way. I don't think that's gonna take much. Looks like that uh, hanger's pretty brittle. I'm guessing we're gonna have to split it right there in order to get the tailpipe out the front That sounds weird when you say it like that tailpipe out the front Man those big rigs they make some noise That's a water truck they haul water and spray for spraying the corn which is currently tasseled out and I lost my 916 socket and Duff is hunting something a lot going on here today Squirrel! Squirrel! Now my favorite part, trying to split exhaust pipes without ruining it, just in case dad doesn't care for the LS and we gotta <laughs> use this exhaust again. Uh, great, looks like somebody's just kidding. We're gonna whack that thing right off. You two look kind of familiar. <laughs> Ain't you them kids that have been whacking off in my tool shed? Look at all that weight reduction. Look at how full of crap those exhaust pipes were. Yucky. All right, let's go throw those in the scrap, I mean, to be used later exhaust pile, because you never know when we might be working on a 66 GMA body that needs a tailpipe and muffler and whatnot. Well, we kind of hosed up the muffler. Whoopsies. We're back on Lillian here. Pretty much got everything stripped out of the engine bay that we don't need. Took the engine mounts off. We're gonna pressure wash it before we put the new ones on. Got the heater hoses off. Took the engine wiring harness off because we're not gonna really need that. We will have to strip it down because the horn relay, I believe is what that is, is on it. And then also our stuff for our wipers. So we're gonna need that. Took our shift linkage off. Yeah, cleaned it all up. We're gonna put new heater hoses on it. These heater hoses had a, a T in them for this whatever block heater thingy mo bopper i got the voltage regulator off uh, of the fire logs we're not going to need that oh and then i took off the old shift linkage and that must be the kick down switch there but anyway instead of a throttle linkage we're going to go to a cable style setup this is off of a 67 camaro with a six cylinder so it's got all the linkages inside and we'll have to put a hole in the firewall and then run a cable through kind of like a square body chevy i think 71 and newer pickups had cable and uh, apparently six cylinders did too I suppose because the carburetor is in a goofy situation as opposed to being parallel with the rest of the world anyway that's what a lot of the first gen Camaro guys do and the what you call it Chevelle guys do so that's what I did that pedal bolted right in there I'll, I'll give you a quick peep at it it looks like it was meant to be it matches the uh, brake pedal pretty well. I feel like if we had the stainless trim around the brake pedal or we could take that stainless trim off, you wouldn't even know. The original pedal was mounted on studs on the floor. Oh, it looks like Grandma Lil was doing some gopher hunting. There's a 22 shell in there. 
Will was a bad mother trucker. Anyway, uh, yeah, so instead of being mounted to the floor, it's free hanging now, and then it's got this linkage coming off to the side, and then we'll just have to punch a hole in the firewall right there, hook our cable to it. A bada bing, a bada boom. Yeah, like I said, it bolted right up to where the old one was, so that'll be good. So now I think we're gonna roll it over to the pressure washer and get rid of some road grime and such. So we're ready for our LS swappage scenario. I'll uh, save you the details on the pressure washing because I feel like this video is going to be pretty long and, and we'll leave the pressure washing to the professionals like that cousin kisser down in Oklahoma. Yeah, most of this can go in the scrap. I'll probably hang on to the gas pedal and the linkage and a couple other pieces just in case we need it someday. And then obviously the wire harness, we're going to have to save that and thin that out at some point. Well, really, I don't think we're going to even need it. We'll need to hook up that power wire, the main power wire that comes to the alternator. I think that's what powers everything up inside of the car. And then we don't even need the wipers for now. We can hook that up later. Looks like we need some new wiper blades anyway. Those old tricos are getting a little rotten. We don't want to scratch up that nice windshield. I always put new wipers on these stainless steel wipers, which you should run, but they'll uh, scratch the crap out of your windshield if you uh, let them get too far gone. If you had a nice old car like this, just make it a habit to put new ones on every year. They're cheap. And keep the stainless ones. I'll go with the plastic ones. Stainless looks so much better. This has got the Shat R Proof. Shat. <laughs> they don't use that word in advertising anymore. The Shaded Safety Float. I don't know if that's the original windshield or not. Comment down below if you're a Buick fanatic and know if that's the original windshield. All right, I think we'll, these are the ones that go on the frame. And these are the ones from Holly that go on the uh, engine side. Got the rubber in them. And I think they're off of like the F-body Camaro or F-body, uh, the LS powered F-body is, what are they like, 98 to 02 Camaros, something like that. I really don't know. I got them from Holly. I don't know what the part number is. Maybe they're even hookers. Who knows? I know nothing. All right, let's get them put on the engine. I don't think we're gonna call her a night. Cause it's way too nice to be working in the shop. We should be out cruising around in Das Bronco, eh? Okay. So we slammed our engine mounts on there. That's pretty neat that the LS has got four bolts holding the engine mount on. I don't know why they got this split clamshell. So it's easier to place the rubber instead of replacing the whole thing. And also on the LS as it's mounted on the engine, as opposed to being mounted on the frame rails like the old square bodies, I don't know. Anyway, see these metal tangs? Make sure you put those on there facing up and they go into that little niche right there. Otherwise, you're gonna be real disappointed when you go to set your engine in place. Tech tip of the day. Save yourself the headache. Make sure the metal flanger is right where it needs to be. We're getting back to the LS swap. Got our windage tray in here. Factory GM one. One, two, five, five, eight, two, three. We're gonna stick that on there. I got the right oil filter. I got a PF 46 or 46E? 48. PF 48, 48E. So I got the right one for what Holly calls out. So I'm gonna stick that in there quick. And then I think we'll slam some engine mounts in and we'll be getting close-ish to sliding this thing back together, right? I hope so. It's gonna be a long drawn out project. Windage tray installed, oil pan installed. Mickelson over here, he snuck in the engine mounts, hopefully in the proper direction. The driver's side's got that little triangular cutout, passenger side's got the half moon cutout. It's too bad he didn't detail this engine bay while he was underneath there. Dang it, it's hard to find good help these days. I think we're ready to made a transmission to it. Let's see if it'll fit. Should be fun. Corey likes to leave me notes. So he wrote eighth inch to 3 16 between the flex plates. So he wants to make sure you got the proper pump engagement between the torque converter and the pump. So that's how much play he wants to turn the flex plate in there. And if you got too much play, you gotta put some machine washers in there. Not just your regular cheapy hardware store washers. You gotta have machine washers, fancy stuff. Cause if you measure washers, they vary quite a bit. That's true. 
Right, Mr. Measurement Man? That's true. All right, let's see if we can't get this heaved hoed up there and get some bolts in. All right, we got her made it up. I think we got, I don't know, it's more than 3 16 the measure says, so we're gonna have to uh, get some washers, but we can do that later once it's in the car, ready to stick it in. I got a new, I don't know, neutral safety switch, backup light, something switch for the transmission, because GM pretty much glues them on, so they're always chewed up. I got some good ones around somewhere, but I don't want to dig for them. And we put a new rear mount in there as well, and then we got our vehicle speed sensor. The fittings that we have in here are for a double flare, 45 degree flare, so we can take these out and put push, push to connects in if we feel like it. And then we stuck our dipstick on, got that tightened up. So now I think we're ready to slam it in place and it's just gonna go in perfectly. Never happens. All right, let's do this. How many times are we gonna have it in and out? What's your guess? Four. Oh, I guess three. We're getting close, but it's not quite the cigar. We're, it looks like we're hitting the shift linkage over here. So, yeah. Well, the whole thing's gotta go that way. It looks like, and down, obviously. The corner of the oil pan down here is catching the cross member. And then it looks, I think they call that the servo cover down there. That is uh, right on the tunnel, but I think the Transmission's got to go towards the driver's side, so it that does. might give us some clearance. It did say in the instructions some uh, persuading may have to take place, so sorry, Grandma Will. She is in there. It is tight between the oil pan and the cross member. And then that shift linkage gave us uh, some fits, but I think uh, looking back, just set the engine in place. I usually like setting them all together, but the transmission was just kind of hanging us up. So now we get to fish a cross member underneath. Hopefully that goes in place. Otherwise we might have to pull it out and do some persuading of sorts. Slap hands. All right, let's uh, see what we can do for a cross member. Well, I'm trying to figure out what to do next. So let's slam some manifolds on because we hate headers. So we got these hookers here. I don't know the part number, but I could look real quick here for you. 8501 HKR hooker LS exhaust. Yeah. So let's see if those fit before we get too wild. Fill up this engine bay a bit more. That side should be easy peasy lemon squeezy. This side might be a bit tight with our steering, so we're gonna find out. All right, we're just gonna put it up there with two bolts, no gaskets or nothing, just to see what we got. These are the ones with the uh, 10 millimeter head. And of course, you grab the one that doesn't have the 10 millimeter head. You just can't get good help these days. You wanna get what you pay for. Good point about free health. <laughs> Those are good. Really good. Those are good hookers. Yeah. And this guy knows hookers. Nothing, no comment. All right, uh, manifolds are done. I don't know what we're gonna do now. I, I think I got some accessory brackets. We can probably play around with those and see if that's gonna work. Maybe we'll have to have a sandwich and think about it. That sounds like a better plan. While we were sitting back admiring this thing, we noticed the old truck intake sits uh, higher than the hood. So we're either not going to have a hood, which is probably not an option, or we're going to have to find a different intake of sorts. So we're going to have to see what we can scrounge up in the aftermarket world or some of the stock car GM ones are lower profile. So we'll figure it out. Minor details. Now you know you can't put a truck intake on your LS swap in your... 66 Buke Skylark. Live and learn.
Look at how spotless it is underneath that son of a biscuit. Cathedral ports, where they make a rectangular port and a cathedral port. You can tell these are cathedral ports by the way that they are, because they got the triangle at the top. So now we're gonna figure out what we can come up with for an intake. And we're gonna throw this one back on there just to fill the hole. And because Mr. C likes how good it looks. I say leave it off and tape it up because it looks like garbage. You look like garbage. Dude, you smell like beer. You look like beer. Hey. All right, we got a frostbite radiator. Let's see if we can't screw that thing up because it's way too nice. I don't even know how that thing freaking mounts. I suppose it'll fit in there. I don't think, I think we're gonna have to do some cutting, maybe. Race car things. So here's our dilemma. The, I think a Chevelle tank that I ordered. It uh, bolts into the firewall here and there's no way to bolt that in on this radiator support. I suppose we could figure something out if we need to. But also it's, it's box, it's double sided, so you have to go all the way through and that's not good. The way the stock Buick t radiator is mounted, was it sat down here in this radiator support these rubber biscuits down there and then it had a couple well i think it just had one, just one. big core support or uh, clamp across the front here usually the gm pickups had just two separate smaller ones but so i think what we're gonna have to do is probably trim those ears off and then uh, we'll do some measuring just to make sure. And we can always move these side to side a little bit. And then uh, I'm gonna have to figure out how to hold it down because I'm thinking my dad's got that piece somewhere. And we're trying to keep this on the DL. I did get the transmission cross member from him. I had to tell him I was getting some stuff sandblasted, the fender and the uh, bumper for the white service trucks. I said, I'm gonna get some stuff blasted and painted. Let's, let's clean up that cross member. But I think if I asked him for the core support, Oh, I can tell him that you're detailing the engine bay. Good. God. And then, he, and then he gets to detail the engine bay. Let's look in the trunk. I did, he did have some parts back here. They're all painted up for the engine that he made me run up to him. But uh, there's no radiator hold down. All right. Oh, scratch that. So we measured where the radiator sits in those brackets and it's within a half inch, so a quarter inch each way. So we can move those a little bit if we have to. And then I think we're just gonna nip these brackets completely off because not only is it keeping us from dropping in, but it might keep us from going ahead and we might need all the clearance we can get. Right, Clarence? That's right, Clarence, Clarence. Two, four. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Now you're catching on, my boy. Airplane, classic. All right, so let's get to cutting up a brand new nice radiator. Sad day. There we go. Nipped our brackets off. Polished her up with the flap disc on the uh, Milwaukee angle grinder. And now we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's gonna fit. Everything's gonna be great, grand. Wonderful. Good, great, grand, wonderful. Idiots. <laughs> There we go. It's good enough for who it's for. This must have been like a two core radiator that was in here. This is like a three or four, so it's a little bit too deep. So we're gonna have to do some some modifying. Give you a close up here of what's going on. See how it's corner of that tank is resting on top of that rubber. Yeah, we need uh, we need deeper rubbers. Story of my life. <sighs> the debacles continue, but that is a nice tape job. Good job. Thanks. Killed it. I think you really missed your calling. Handsome Rob stopped over. He helped me get this thing up on the lift. Mickelson and I shut her down last night and did a quick live. So if you haven't seen that, you probably have because that was, I'm guessing, months ago by the time this goes live. But check that out. And yeah, let's take a look at what we got going on here. You can see where we uh, scuffed up the oil pan getting her in there. She is tight. Can't even get my pointer finger in there. Tight like a tiger. Yes, you are tight like a tiger. We got our lower bell housing bolts in. Here's our tranny cross member. We gotta line that up yet. And then, you know, here's our existing holes. Here's where we gotta be. So clearly the overdrive is longer than the two speed. If we're lucky, maybe we'll get to use one hole. Have to drill only one on each side. Oh, 
If we're real lucky, it'll line up with that hole that's already there. Oh, we don't have one over here. Maybe. I don't know. There might be one there. Let's let's dig around. Let's see what we can find. Oh, how sweet would that be? If GM set these things up to be LS swapped. That's the media GM. Speedo cable, uh, we could probably take out because we're not gonna have a mechanical Speedo anymore. And yeah, I got our fuel tank here. I got our Bundy fittings to thread in. Uh, they go NPT to those quick connect, which is called a Bundy. So you gotta put those on there and then we can put the fuel tank in. So that'll be good. And then maybe we can play around with some exhaust and whatnot. Oh, we gotta figure out our distance between our torque converter and our flexi plate. And see if we gotta put some washers in there. Also, Chinese real tight right there. I don't know, it's some solenoid something or other. So if you're doing this swap, maybe uh, get Bertha and wallop that a bit. Ooh, she's gonna be tight for tranny cooler lines too. Perfect. We'll get it figured out, but hopefully we don't have to pull it out of there. Yeah, we were guessing like three, four times we're gonna have to pull this thing in and out. We got her in the first shot. Let's hope it stays in there. Probably won't, but one can always hope. I'm gonna give you a quick update. So I used my caliper and I measured the depth from the flex plate to the torque converter and then subtracted out the thickness of my flex plate and it's 240 thou and we gotta be 316, which is 0.1875 down to uh, eighth of an inch, which is 0.125. So I need some machined washers between like, was it 50 thou and 110 thou, something like that. So I'm gonna round up a handful of them because we're gonna drop some for sure. And then and we got uh, our cross member in there. Of course, these holes are like two and three sixteenths apart and the factory hole it was there was what was it inch and seven eighths so i did have to drill a new three eighths hole on each side not too big of a deal it was pretty close to that one but still was plenty of meat left so we got that bolted in we got our mount in the middle bolted in and then we slid in i got a new old stock yoke laying around i like to slide mine in so there's two fingers of thickness and that's my fat fingers and i measured from you know the center of that to the center of this and I get 56 and three quarter and we just happen to have a 56 and a half inch drive shaft laying around. I don't know what it's out of, but it's got the wrong yoke on this end and then it's got a yoke on this end and we don't want a yoke. So we're gonna blow the U-joints out of this son of a biscuit and a uh, quarter inch isn't gonna matter for what we're doing. And plus the rear end is dropped down. So as it goes up to ride height, it should get slightly closer. So we'll see. It's not like we're building a drive. Ideally, you probably want to have the weight of the car on there, but we'll be fine. You know, plus or minus three quarters of an inch, you're probably good to go, maybe. I don't know. Uh, all we're gonna be out is a little bit of time and our U-joints, if we put it together and it doesn't work, we'll just have to find another one. If you're making one from scratch, then you really want to make sure you get those dimensions right. So, should be good. So I'm gonna blow that apart. We're gonna figure out what universal joints these are, what universal joints I need for that yoke, and what I need for the Buick. I should be able to just look this up through Rock Auto, but for the yoke, because I don't know what the heck that's for, and for this drive shaft, I don't know what the heck that's for, we're gonna have to uh, take some dimensions of our cross and our diameters and all that good stuff, so. I'll let you know what I come up with. Hopefully we don't have to use, I call them bastard joints, but the rest of the world calls them combination joints because apparently bastard is a naughty word. So whatever. I do like to not use bastard joints because combination joints, because they're a little bit more expensive. And if you ever have an issue on the side of the road, it's a little bit harder to get a hold of one of those where like a 369 or a 354 or a 331 a precision U joint is pretty easy to get, but I think 372 is a pretty common uh, combination joint. There's a couple other ones. I don't know. I got a box full of them. They're, uh, they're pretty common. You can get them in most of the major parts stores. So enough yakking. I'm going to make us a drive shaft.
Now, by measuring, it's not really the cross, but measuring the outside dimension of this universal joint, which is 3.22 inches, and then measuring the diameter of the cup, which is 1.06. Should be able to figure out what these joints are, and then we'll have to figure out what we gotta have to make a combination work with everything else. So that's how I measure universal joints. Diameter, cross. They say the cross width is when you measure from there to there on that side, but I just measure from there to there. And you figure it out. I got a little cheat sheet that you can find online from Precision Joints. Cause that's what I like to use, precision. Cause that's what we do around here. Everything is precision, right? Not really. Also, get yourself a cute little pair of these channel lock pliers. They work frickin' amazing. Taking these clips off universal joints. You're welcome. You'll wonder how you ever did it without it. There's a trainer kid going by and he's, oh, all the race cars with stacks. Dang, we're lucky. Instead, we're here playing with U-joints. So I got my cheat sheet here. You can get this from, uh, was it Moog or Precision? Aren't they in bed together? I don't freaking know. Anyway. Precision cross-reference. Yeah, Moog suspension parts. They're in bed together. Well, yeah, look, they say Moog right on them. Duh. Sometimes I uh, surprise myself with how intelligent I am. Anyway, there's about 20 pages here that I printed off. Gosh, look, it says 2010. I've had these laminated pages for freaking 12 years now. Anywho, uh, so you can go in here and you can, your A to A dimension. Oh, I should show you the first page because you're probably going to want to see that, right? Yeah, hold on. There it is. First page, A, that's your cup diameter. You know, obviously that cup diameter and that cup diameter, because usually the cross sides are the same dimension. And then B is that dimension I was talking about. And then there's ones with four plane bearings, ones with four groove bearings, and then there's some with two grooved and two plane bearings. So measure this one out, comes up to be a 369, which is four plane bearings. And then they got the clips on the outside that hold them in. We looked up the 1966 Buick Skylark. Did you know you could get these things with like, I don't know, they made a little 200 cubic inch engine, then the 300, then a 340, I think a 400. It was probably a 401, and then the 425, the big dog nail head you could get in these things. That thing would be a freaking hot rod with a four and a quarter nail head in it. But anyway, these come with 534s. Where's the 534? Right there. So this is a 369 that came out of that. I mean, you can see the size difference. So these are inch and an eighth caps. These are inch and a sixteenth, so a little bit bigger caps and quite a bit bigger cross. So you cross a 369 with a 534 and you get, what did I call it earlier? The 372. So you can see it's quite a bit wider across there and narrower this way. These are inch and an eighth cups. These are inch and a sixteenth. And then the clips, it's got two of the inside clips that go over these grooves here, just like this. And then two of the outside clips, which Clip under the drive shaft. So we need two of those, one on each end. So remind me to order some new ones so that uh, next time I need to do this, I got them on hand. And I made sure, oh, and then I measured this yoke out. That takes a 534 as well. I made sure that those clips fit on the inside and that these are inch and an eighth diameter holes. So dad gets a new yoke, lucky him. And what else? Yeah, oh, and I, I took this 534, slid it under the car and measured and made sure that that would fit underneath that car. Not measured, actually put it underneath the car to make sure it would fit, because that'd be my luck. I'd go on Rock Auto and they would mislead me. They don't usually do that, but it's good to double check, because if anybody's gonna screw something up, it's gonna be us. Right, Duff? Why don't you go find that freaking cricket? Ugh, you got a rough life. Okay, I'm gonna put together a drive them shaft. Hopefully you enjoyed all of your worthless knowledge I just dumped on you about universal joints. Now I'm gonna put my mess away. Try to get these all mixed up.
There you have it, one freshly made drive shaft. I feel like these weights are supposed to be on the tail end, but it doesn't matter to me. Dad, you can fix that when you blow it apart this winter and fix everything that I screwed up. All right, let's see if it fits. Well, Duff, we lucked out, didn't we? She slid right in. We got two fingers of clearance. We had to round up some U-bolts because Dad's got those from when he took this thing apart and it would be silly to ask him for them. That would kind of ruin the surprise. So, Dad, when you see this video, you owe me a couple of U-bolts. Throw back in my collection. But yeah, drive shaft is done. What should we do now? I suppose we could play with the shift linkage. Try to figure that out. Hopefully we can make a cable setup similar to what we got on the F1. Oh man, we need to get back to that thing too. All right, since we're under here, we got it in the air. Let's mess around with that. We should probably, I'm guessing there's something that's missing here for this park brake cable. Father might frown upon it if I cut it off, so we should uh, zip tie that up or something. I don't know. Who knows what's going on there? Minor details. What are we up to now, Duff? Fuel tanks. So we got our Bundy fittings installed. I had the fuel neck the wrong way. You know, you'd think it would be pointing downhill. No, it... Anyway, I had it banana the wrong way. Now it's a frown instead of a smiley face. And this tank comes with some nice shiny new brackets. I don't think the tanks shape any differently, but we're gonna put the shiny new ones on because, you know, we got them, right Duff? It's the right thing to do. Let's see if I can't wheel this thing in there with my bum shoulder. Should be fun. I know, we should go get the transmission jack that we just had over here, but. Not only are we dumb, we're also lazy, aren't we pal? Well, let's do this. Well, that fuel tank is in and as you can see I, I had to go get some assistance from the under hoist support stands they're good for 1500 pounds each or the pair I don't know anyway it was no problem for this but speaking of problems I uh, should have hooked some wires up to those sending unit connectors so should be able to push on these Bundy fittings those will, or connectors those will be bad but I think we're gonna have to put some pigtails on there, on those. We'll just leave one long for hooking up to this, and then we'll leave a long one with a couple eyelets for the ground strap that's gotta connect right to there. All right, live and learn. If you learn from your mistakes, I should be one smart SOB by now. All right, I'm gonna fix that. See you in a little bit. Gonna give you guys another quick tip on wiring. We're really expanding our horizons. We're stepping out into the uh, watch West work world. So there are just our regular heat shrink solder connectors. You know, uh, it's kind of like a bullet connector that the original fuel gauge had, but not only do we have the fuel gauge now, we also have the fuel pump. And you don't want to butt connect those because in case we ever got to drop that tank, we would have to cut the wires. So let's put a connector in there and you want a weather tight connector. So what I've broadened my horizons onto is a, uh, weather packs so i got this kit on amazonia it's uh wp-405 it's kind of spendy but these things are awesome so first thing you do is you trim off your wire and then you slide this rubber boot das boot over it uh, you slide that you strip your wire slide the boot over it and then you crimp your boot with one of the according holes in this crimper the crimper came with the kit too and so this is crimped around the battery cable, or the battery cable, the wire, and so that water can't wick up the wire and into these connectors, and then these connectors are also sealed as well. And then you got male and female ends that you crimp on there, and then you just slide your connector over it, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There's a few different slots in here for the different sizes, you know, if you got 18 to 20 gauge or 14 to 16 gauge or 12 gauge, whatever you got. And then you gotta use the according color seal. And then there's plugs and then there's the removal tool. Once you slide these together, you gotta have this little removal tool to slide in there and to uh, get this thing to come apart. And then as you use these, there's one pin, two pin, and then three pin connectors and they make several pin connectors. 
this is what a lot of the manufacturers use as well or similar stuff you know gm's got a, their own weather pack or deutsch connectors there's a lot of different ones but these are way better than what you see you know in your regular eyelets and bullet connectors and butt connectors so i'll show you what i got going on i already crimped our two pin connector for our fuel pump on there uh, and then these are labeled A and B, so I got the red in A, which is power, and the ground, which is black, in B. And then here's what that uh, connector looks like. So, like I said, you strip the wire, you slide this boot over it, and then you put your pin on there, and you crimp it twice. You crimp it once on the wire. Let me get my pointer out here. Pointer provided by A Purvis Blades. You crimp it once onto the wire, and then you crimp it once around DAS boot, so it holds the boot. And then this is our female connector you can see because it's got the barrel and male you know because these these identify as male and female and then here's our actual connectors i got them slid together here so our male pin goes inside of our female connector that's the female that's the male side of course i'm going to drop that so that slides in there clips in place and you clip that over it you do the same thing for the uh, male and female connector over here. Slide that in, slip that over. Now we got a weather tight seal. If we ever gotta drop our tank, all we gotta do, slide that apart. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. There you go, your uh, worthless information of the day. Like I said, that kit, I don't remember what it was. It was, it was over a hundred bucks and it's been in my shopping cart for a while and finally I figured we're gonna have to do enough wiring in this. So we bit the bullet and I feel like we're going to use it several times on this uh, project here, so it'll pay for itself. Now I'm going to install our breather here, which I think it's got a rollover check in it. Or maybe it's just a check valve so that it can't suck anything in and it can only vent out. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to install that. Another change of plans. Imagine that. So there was already a breather built into the car. So we just tapped it into that. No need to mount that breather somewhere else because there's already stuff here for us. Sweet. We're just banging it out today. We should be driving this thing in just a matter of months or years. It's only been 17, so that's a couple more. Hey, it's me again. We've got all our engine mounts tight. There's three bolts on each side holding the engine mount to the cross member, and then one bolt holding the uh, cross member mount to the uh, engine mount you know the, the through bolt that bolt's easy these other ones there's one on each side that takes an act of the good lord himself to get it tight there's a carriage bolt that drops in from that side so you don't have to hold that side but it's just below this hole and it's just above that hole so what i ended up doing was putting a three inch extension on a one inch extension with this handy dandy little sun x 9 16 I don't know, tubing wrench, crow's foot thinger, getting it tight. And it still took a lot of ambidexterity and colorful language and such, but we got her done. So glad that's done. Hopefully we don't have to do that again. And I wanted to get it good and tight, good and tight so that we didn't have to address that on the side of the road somewhere or have the engine just tearing loose. I don't think it's going to be a problem. And plus they have the serrated whiz nuts on them i don't know if i got one laying here oh i got one here on the these uh flange nuts with the serration on the black side back side they dig into what you're tightening it into so these things are good they never come loose shouldn't say never i have really good luck with them and plus if you got one in a tight spot that you can't hold the back side it kind of holds itself if you get it halfway snug and then just crank her down the other on the bolt side tech tip of the day use serrated nuts in uh tight spots all right i don't know what to do next while we got her on the hoist We'll think of something. The list is pretty long yet. All right, we are getting crazy now. We had this hooker in a box laying around here for a while. We got ourselves a three inch exhaust system for granny here. Looks pretty freaking swanky. I've never had anything with three inch exhaust. Ah, uh, maybe the big block in my 71 Chevy short bed, but that's a pretty terrible exhaust system in it. No offense, boom tube. But yeah, it looks like dual exhaust, two tailpipes, two over the axle humps to hooker husher mufflers a little cross over there so yeah you know to really wake up the six liter a couple of down pipes and then we got some adapters to go from whatever this is two and a half to uh three inch 
a bunch of band clamps, some hanger brackets, some uh, hangers, and some hardware. See how bad we could screw this up. I haven't done a whole lot of exhaust kits. And I'm guessing three inch is gonna be real frickin' tight underneath this son of a gun, so wish me luck. Good news is we got all kinds of destructions, so we'll see what we can do. Well, we ran into our first snag here. These are, I think, two and a half down pipes, and these are three inch, plus they're flared out larger. And these come with adapters to go up to three inch, but they're not flared to go inside or over the down pipe. And then this is, you know, it's, it's oversized of three inch, so it's supposed to go over a three inch pipe, which this is already flared too. So, I don't know what the French we're gonna do here. We're gonna have to do some uh, configuring of sorts. We might have to talk to Boom to him, see if he can expand this a little bit to go over that. And I don't know what we're gonna do on this end. I mean, we can always cut that off, but I don't wanna screw anything up. You know, measure twice, cut once. Cause I'm guessing this three inch pipe is expensive if we gotta hose it up and make some new stuff. All right, I'm gonna see if I can't get a hold of it, old Tiffany and see what she can come up with. Stay tuned. Nothing is ever easy. Gosh dang it. What do you think about this, Duff? Other than we're gonna have to figure out some type of adapter there. It's all going together pretty well. Obviously this is just initial fit up, but this causes it to kick down. I don't know if it's supposed to kick it up. I don't think it's gonna kick it up because if that kicked it up, we'd definitely hit that cross more. So there's gonna be some adjusting because it seems like it hangs really low, but we shall see. It's not gonna be a low rider like the rest of my fleet. Or will it? Who knows? Let's see how the tailpipes feel. All right, I think we're as far as we can get tonight. We gotta get boom tube to do some flaring so that we can get everything tied up up here because we can't start tightening everything up back there and then find out we're off up here. It's, you kinda gotta leave everything loose and laid out. And then go back and, you know, these are fixed points basically, so you gotta work your way back. But everything's fitting pretty dang good. Like I said, once we get those figured out, that's gonna make a big difference. But these hangers back here, they work pretty sweet. Uh, there's a little bit of adjustment there, but the uh, mandrel bends that go over the top of the rear axle, I mean, it's tight through there, but these things fit in there real good. There's not a lot of room around them. Uh, the only thing that's really moving is these control arms and then the axle. So just make sure you got room between the body and room for when these move up and down, you should be good. But so the stock hanger holes that you're supposed to use are right here. And you can see that this hanger is supposed to, it's got to be up here. So we'll have to drill a couple of five sixteens holes up here. Not a big deal, but I like the way those things come out. Just kind of a little dump at the end, nice and high and tight. So you don't really see them. I hate exhaust tips that when they come out right out here and they're straight or they got a big chrome dump or whatever. I like exhaust that you don't see. I even like exhaust you don't hear, but a little bit of throaty exhaust is all right too. I'm not into the glass pack cackly straight pipe, yada, yada, yada. But, I think that's where we're gonna wrap it up. We will get to boom tubes tomorrow and get some tubing flared here for our adapters. We'll have to figure something out. I don't know what we're gonna do here, but we'll get that done. And then uh, hopefully we can wrap this up. These are really nice kits. It's got all these nice band clamps instead of our U-bolt clamps that crimp the snot out of your pipe. And then it's got the O2 sensors built right into it, where the bungs are welded into it. Like I said, it's got a crossover, uses a lot of the stock holes. It's supposed to use all of them, but I don't know, maybe just 
because this is a Buick and not a Chevelle because it's a kit for a Chevelle. I don't know. Maybe the A bodies weren't all the same. Went together pretty good. Uh, doing this on the ground would not be fun. This hoist is a lifesaver. All right. We'll see you guys whenever we see you again. All right. So we ran up to boom tubes and did a little boom tube thing. So we had him flare the ends of these adapters so that they'll slide over the downpipes. Then we got a chunk of three inch pipe that'll go inside of that. And it'll also go inside of that. So we should be good to go. Keyword should be. We're gonna have to do some cutting and trimming and splicing and clamping. I don't have clamps for this two and a quarter or two and a half, whatever it is, yet. So we're gonna be without that until that arrives, but we should have everything else. So let's do it to it. Might as well start with this side since it's already up here. So I had an epiphany here. So basically, this hoop right here has to be centered over the axle. And also, this hanger, you want it to be vertical right there. So, I slid this pipe to where that's gotta be vertical, or where that's vertical. Slid this muffler all the way back, and then I marked it. And then I marked it right by this snot, so if it goes in further, I can see if it's in too far. And then I slid this H pipe all the way back. Again, marked it there. Did it on both pipes. So that's kind of where all that has to sit. And see, these are at an angle, and so these can only slide in and out in order to line up with these pipes. So this kind of dictates where we've got to be with the whole situation. And then of course you got to have your mufflers level, and really that's kind of where it's got to sit. It can't go up or down back there, fore and aft. That pretty much dictates where everything's got to be. There's going to be a little bit of adjustment, but pretty much it so let's uh start figuring what we got to do up here i guess we're gonna have to cut a big chunk of this out but we'll see next i slid this pipe in as far as it would go inside of that pipe and inside of this pipe we'll go about three inches into that one two and three quarter into that one so i just doubled two and three quarter we don't need to go in the full length basically just got to go past these notches so that we can clamp it and get a good seal Wait. <laughs> so we're gonna go cut this off at five and a half inches we're only gonna make one cut uh, I measured this one just in case it does work and then we're gonna start trying to slide this all together but we're gonna have to do some cutting up there I got a feeling hook down a feeling this thing's that one I'm sure you guys will comment it down below <laughs> Tell you what, this job is exhausting. I know you wanted a dad joke today. Now what I did, take this, slide it up tight against that, because it can't be any shorter than that, possibly. I mean, we can always make it longer. And I put a mark about where the bottleneck on this stops. And we can always shorten this up. Measure once, cut twice. So, we're gonna take this off, put it in the bandsaw, and then cut her off right there, and in theory, this should slide over up to that point. This should slide into that. Uh, we just gotta put clamps on it. There we go. I did find some of these torque tight clamps from another project. These are uh, pretty neat. They got that step in there. And so, yeah, the big side would go over that. And then the small side goes over that down pipe. Yeah, these actually are pretty nice. They're a little bit more expensive than your standard u-bolt clamps but way more gooder are they made in america even there's a patent on them come on yeah there it is made in the usa good stuff Ugh, they even show flexi pipe on there barf i think i like flexi hoses better than flexi exhaust pipe if that's possible what do you think duff what do you like better what do you hate worse, flexi hose or flexi exhaust pipe? He says he's exhausted as well, so we hate flexi exhaust worse. Okay, I'm gonna pull that uh, down pipe down and we're gonna cut her up. Hopefully we cut it right.
Everything's looking pretty good up here. Like I said, it's real tight across them right there. And that's kind of where it starts dropping down. So if we were to cut some more out here, I feel like we could move it ahead, cheat each one of those connections ahead a little bit and get that down. Or we could just, you know, take a little chunk off that cross member, heat it up and bend it. We will see once we get everything going how bad it is. Uh, I'm not too concerned about it, but she's pretty, pretty close. See if we can get the uh, A Purvis blades through there. I don't think it's quite touching, but it's real dang close. Like I said, we are holding it up right now. So maybe when I take that down, I'll get some clearance. I snugged everything up all the way back. Not like overly tight or just, like I said, snug. I want to get this tied down here. So we're going to have to drill a couple holes in the frame. Not a big deal, but let's get that done before we go to the other side. In case we discover something that uh, we screwed up on this side, we won't make that same mistake on the other side, right? Learn from your mistakes. Should be one smart SOB. We should make a shirt that says that. Okay, let's uh, get this side done. I think that's gonna wrap it up and I am exhausted. We're still gotta probably put some miles on it and then uh, snug up these connectors, but yeah, everything looks pretty dang good. We might have to do a little adjusting to make sure they're both level. It kind of seems like this one's maybe higher than the other, but. And then check to make sure they're not rubbing like that is right there. So I need to tweak that over a bit again on this side so we'll have to adjust those not a big deal plenty of clearance up here uh, we're touching the uh, park brake cable but you know what we do with those we cut them this side she's real close but it looks like there's breathing room i don't like i wish i had this clamp flipped the other way but other than that, minor stuff. Pretty dang nice kit. Um, yeah. Hooker really has their stuff together. All right, I'm gonna tweak those before I forget about it. All right, see you in a bit. All right, so got off work, snuck a little time into working on this thing in between other projects around here. Mojo cleaned up the starter for me today, so I stuck that on. And then we got our transmission harness in place. We got our main connector, our vehicle speed sensor connector, and then the rest of them we fished all up there. We started playing around with the shift linkage. I got a bracket down here. I don't know if that cable stuff's gonna work. I think it's kind of a straight enough shot right there. I'm gonna see if I can't scrounge up a factory shift rod out of my collection and just come down here and have to avoid the cable and the expenses and everything else and plus it's factory what else do we do under here i think that's about it just quick update that's what we did today nothing uh too exciting but i figured i'd let you know i did that stuff now i'm gonna go back to working on something else so yep well uh you guys are watching this video several months weeks later i'm uh just trying to slam in content to keep you guys entertained every Monday. All right, Duff? Right. Here we are, between projects. Between projects. Yeah, I guess that's what you'd call it. I think it's about wrapped up. We're gonna wrap it up tomorrow when it's daylight out, even though that light bar pretty much provides daylight. But we are back on the 66 Skylark. And old Tiffany, she broke through to me while we were enjoying some wibby raspberry lager light shine rattlers together. These things are great. If anybody 
is coming from Colorado to North Dakota. Smuggle me some of these. Like we need a, a modern day bandit. If somebody would bring me some of these in a WS6 Trans Am with a LS in it. Oh, it'd be wild times. You'd be better if you had a mustache. But anywho, I had uh, bought a shift linkage kit, cable operated to go off the column. Similar to what we got going on in that pickup for this thing. And it was missing some parts, hence why it was cheap. And then when I was looking for shifters for that stupid thing, I thought, you know, I don't ever throw nothing away. So I shaved all my linkages and whatnot from all these GMs I've boned out over the years. And old Tiffany, she said, you know, why don't you just use all stock GM stuff, maybe modify it a bit and get the column shift to work. She's a smart gal. Cause look at this, just look at it. Look at that, oh, look at that. So we got a 4L60E underneath this thing and I got a mishmash of parts. I don't know what they're off of. I got a shift rod and a pivot and then a, the, 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 the gal dang it on the transmission is off a 70 Chevelle, the little U-bolt thinger, which they're all the same. <laughs> Have I told you how much those wibbies really hit me? In the in the in the warm spot but look at this park reverse neutral drive which is pretty good considering we haven't fine-tuned anything and this was only a two-speed shifter originally you can tell it was a two-speed shifter by the way that it is this is an aspen you can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is and then it only has drive and low so we got some fine tuning to do, but here's what I got. I got this shift rod. I don't know what it's off of. It's pretty straight. It's got two bends in it. And then it goes down to a pivot. I don't know what that's off of. And then it goes to that 70 Chevelle gall dang it. That uh, old Davey, the guy who gave us the right hand drive UPS trucker thinger. He hooked us up with a 307 and I think it's a turbo 350. I didn't even look at it. Out of a 70 Chevelle with low miles, it was his mother-in-law's or something that rusted out. So he's like, hey, do you want this thing? And I'm like, yeah. So it's already donating parts. So that's the beauty of GMs. Everything freaking interchanges. So you can take, I got an old derby. This is the part that I'm talking about. This little U-bolt thinger. Never mind that I welded a bolt to it or two pieces of flat strap when I was about 20 years old for a derby car. But this little piece right here, that niche goes on the transmission shift shaft and then you're pivot hooks into this thing i think i got a different better-ish one here but anyway I, I keep all this stuff these are some ford garbage these are some clutch push rods and a four-wheel drive shifter and then these are all the rods that go from the steering column down to the pivot and these are all pivots like see how how different each one of these is well they got the same diameter and pinhole location on the top and the same on the bottom and this is how you adjust it it's got this little adjuster clamp at the bottom and that adjuster clamp is that piece right there goes through that pivot and this drops through well here I'll show you through this guy this is kind of an oddball one but it drops through that which usually that hex hole hex hex octagonal is right in the middle here but this one's kind of an offset and that's the beauty of these things you save them all and then you make a mishmash of uh what works these are all the pivot shafts one end goes to the transmission, one end hooks in the frame, and then your shift linkage hooks there. Like there's a straight one, eh, it's got a little bend to it. And this one's got a pretty good bend to it, and then this linkage has got an offset to the left. This one's got a pretty good bend to it, but it's got an offset to the right. This one's pretty much straight, and that linkage is probably pretty much straight, except for I bent it, taking it apart. This one's longer, and it's got an offset to the right. So, I mean, just use, just save this stuff. That's, I feel like Brent at Half-Ass Customs is like the, uh, the king of this. But it does shift a little stiff and it hits the exhaust. I'll show you when we lift it up. So it's got some fine tuning to do. We're in a time crunch. So if we only got drive in third that we can shift it down to so we can't hold her in first, so be it. We can fine tune this thing. And, and I could get the factory stuff from my old man. But I don't want to ask him because I feel like, hey, I borrowed this car for putting brakes on it. And if I ask him about shift linkages, he's going to be like, why are you asking about shift linkages to put brakes on? So I 
keep this on the DL so I didn't dig through my stash. So dad, you owe me the shift linkage and whatnot off this car or just give me this stuff back when you make it so that it's got second and first. But I'll show you when we get it up in the air and it'll probably be, we can probably get second and first if we got time. We got time, but we don't because we're going to make these stupid videos every week. Just kidding. Everyone says I gotta be happy or so. I really like making videos for you guys and getting projects done, but I don't get projects done. I just, I got this project done and it's taken me like four months and it's a headache doing it in between other projects. Let's get it up in the air. All right, so here we go. Hoists are nice. So this is the rod coming down from the steering column. This is that clamp slash adjuster. So you can slide that up and down to get, you know, park lined up where park is on that park is on your column park is on your transmission and park is on your column there's a spring that goes in between here there's no good way to store these springs so i don't know where those all went but this is the only one i got here's the uh, pivot location on the frame this is the stock location and it pretty much lines up you can see that with that 4L68, the beauty of GM. Like, what are the odds that that shift location is in the exact same spot on a 66 Buick Skylark as a 2001 Chevrolet Silverado three quarter ton four wheel drive? Pretty much lined straight up. The problem here is this rod comes in at an angle. You can see it's kind of binding here. So I think we gotta take that bend out of it. It's gotta have a bend for the firewall coming ahead, but this bend going kitty wampus has gotta go away. That or we got to put a bend in this shaft right here, but I think we're going to bend the rod. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good, but I probably can't pull down on the column. But anyway, our issue is where we're only getting drive and third and we're not getting second first is this little hooey, this bend here hits on the uh, downpipe or this adapter or whatever. So I think what we can do is I can make a new one of these or modify one that's straight and goes from here straight to there and then there's a T going this way and we got to figure out how to tighten that nut so yeah we'll just have to have it like open in the center so you can get a socket through there or something I don't know but obviously that spring is there to keep tension on it and this hole is not is slotted so that everything can move back and forth for you know body flex and then the engine moving and the engine mounts so yeah that's freaking awesome this is off 70 chevelle this is off who knows what something really greasy this is off a mother vehicle but it all works surprisingly well yeah the beauty of gm so i just wanted to give you that quick update i probably got i don't know half hour into messing around with that short of all the time that i spent running up the parts at the old shop because you know now we're in a new shop and uh, a lot of the parts are still at the old shop but anyway we're getting stuff organized so now i got a tote full of stuff instead of it just throwing in a pile at the old shop anywho yeah pretty awesome using stock gm stuff instead of aftermarket stuff works way better you don't have to worry about a cable melting you don't have to pay 150 bucks for a cable setup you don't have to modify your steering column it's gonna be sweet i'm gonna fine tune this a little bit See if we can't get it shifting a little bit smoother. And then maybe at a later date, we'll uh, get her down to uh, second first. But like I said, we're on a crunch. As long as we got drive, overdrive, whatever, great. We will worry about uh, burnout gears later. All right. I wonder if that light was right in your eyes. I bet it was. Tough luck. That's why our film crew consists of this guy with thumbs and that guy with no thumbs. Get yourself a Cyclops light. They're great. And if you like them that much, get two or three, because there's one up on the firewall right now. All right, back at it. We're back doing the LS swap. And if anybody tells you these things are easy, they're lying. So they make a smaller power steering pump pulley. I'll show you here. I think it's off like a 2004 S10. Let's see how much smaller the diameter is than the 99 to 06 pickup. So everybody says, yeah, if you put that smaller pulley on, it'll it'll fit. Well, it's not gonna fit. It hits the uh, pump right there. I mean, it's close. The bolts almost wanna start, but she ain't quite gonna go. So that isn't gonna work. Not a big deal, you know, there's, there's other options out there. One of the things they do, I think they put like a Jeep Wagoneer, Grand Cherokee, Grand Cherokee, I think. I think they put a Grand Cherokee box, it's got a quicker ratio. A lot of guys like that, so. 
some of the guys are running that maybe that'll give us more clearance but i don't want to buy a steering box to find out that that isn't going to fix our issue because i don't really care about the steering at this point i just want to get it running and driving but that's something uh to try out there if you're interested and of course the box is a bolt in but i doubt it i'm sure it's got different fittings on the steering or something man what is that peterbilt with uh stacks things so we got another option we got this holly kit oh what's the part number uh it's over here somewhere but it raises the power steering pump up and it uses a 20-135 and it uses a corvette power steering pump which is quite a bit more compact and then it's got an external reservoir which is probably why it's more compact so i had this on there and uh it's kind of designed for corvettes so the whole kit is so you gotta have a spacer on the back side and when it moves it out this gets into the fan so we can't run our mechanical fan so that's where i'm at now is we're probably gonna have to run this setup and we're just gonna have to get electric fans which i'm not a big fan of electric fans but i'm not gonna buy a steering box to find out that that doesn't fix it because we're already pretty deep into this whole scenario but we'll get it figured out electric fans ain't the end of the world they do work good a lot of people love them it's not me. I, I just think you can't go wrong with a mechanical fan. That's what they had. It was good enough from 2004 on down on GM. So LS based stuff anyway. Pickups, I should say. You do free up a little bit of horsepower, but just more issues. You can't, I like the simplicity of a mechanical fan and they move a butt ton of air and you don't ever hear them. So there's that. All right, I'm gonna put the Holly stuff back on the 20-135. Uh, use your stock alternator. Like I said, use that Corvette power steering pump. You gotta have that spacer kit to use the truck accessories. Which at this point, I mean, what are we using that's based off the truck anymore? Other than the water pump and this tensioner and our alternator, which I think all the alternators are pretty much the same, it looks like. All right. Just can't catch a break. But it was easy. Everybody would do it. All right. Back at it. Let me get that swapped out. You're not going to watch me do it because I don't know why. Because you don't want to watch me do that. And I'll probably not be happy about it. Just kidding. Everything's great. We got our Holly 20 135 kit installed. And it is freaking nice. But here's the nice part that I don't like. The not so nice part, I guess. That fan hits that reservoir. Dang it. Uh, I know we could relocate that reservoir. You know, that's something maybe we could look at. I like using all the original stuff as much as we can, which is kind of why I want to use that fan, but because um, we're going to make a new return hose from this line to that knipple right there. And then there's the uh, line going into the pump, so we could move it up and back. Maybe that's, maybe that's an option. We'll ponder on it. Maybe old Tiffany will come over and show us what's up. But yeah, I don't know what to do. Not sure, not sure. I really wish that thing was just about an inch and a half back. So we could modify that bracket. How much room we got? I'm gonna do some figuring, see if we can't make this all work together. One happy little family. The Holly parts, the Corvette parts, the pickup parts. All of the parts. Scratch the move the reservoir in idea. If I put the reservoir tight against that bolt right there, we got about a quarter inch of clearance and I don't like all that because then you gotta worry about that bolt rubbing through and uh, if that fan flexes at all. I mean, it's tight. You could, you could probably do it, but I just, I don't feel real comfortable. I don't. So I feel like, uh, our only other option is to put her way up here or over here, but that's where our belt. Oh, that's the other thing is we gotta know where our belt is being routed. So, electric fans, it is awesome. So, we picked up this Holly Sniper EFI because she's low profile and it's cool, it's fast. We put the throttle position sensor in and what is it, idle air control valve. We got a 92 millimetric throat hole breather opener thing. Got that all assembled, set in place, but she don't go all the way down because that throttle bracket hits her water neck here. 
So, the saga continues. I can either, you know, do the old header trick and just dimple it a bit, or we can cut it down, or we can just put a whole different water pump set up on it. We're gonna, we're gonna have to debate on that one what to do. It would be nice to not have to modify it so that if we ever have a water pump failure, we just stick the new water pump on. But, such is life. I'll give you a shout on the next debacle. Everything's going great. All right, we used one of our 9906 half ton Tahoe four wheel drive pickup something or other. Power steering hoses, it threads into the pump and it, it clears the pulley, barely. So we might have to fix some of those bends because obviously our belt's gonna come around somewhere in here. I don't I think it goes up and over here and then down this way, so we might be all right. But we'll probably do put some bends in it to give ourselves some clearance. Here's the problem. This has got like an O-ring boss. I don't know what it's called, some type of O-ring. In our original one, if I can get her off here. Give me a second. But other than the bends being incorrect, here's our other issue. This is a O-ring style, and this is an inverted flare. But I think what we can do is just cut this O-ring boss off, slide this fitting off, slide this fitting on, reflare it with a 45 degree double flare, and then we might have to do some finagling with this bin, but we should be able to get that to work. I don't like this because if you ever have an issue when we blow this out on the road, we're not gonna be able to make another one unless we have a flaring tool with us and tools to bend it upright. But I know they make adapters, so that is one option, but I think what we're gonna do, I don't like adapters because then instead of having one spot to leak on the end here, you got two spots for it to leak. If you ever have an issue with that adapter, you're not gonna really probably find one of those on the road. So let's see what happens. Here we go. Well, a quick uh, nip of the old power steering hose. Two of them actually. We put this nut on there. A perfect 45 degree flare. Man, I like that flaring tool. I had to straighten this bend out a little bit. A to give us clearance and B so that I could get the nut slid back far enough to get my tool on there. You know, that's the problem with having a big tool. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> so, let's uh, do a little bit more fitting. And see if we can get this all snugged in place. If you'll remember, this kind of went like this and then straight back down to here. So we, instead of 180, we got her kind of into a 90. I used my bending tool to unbend it so I didn't kink her up much. And I got to thinking, you know, if this ever did fail in the field, you could just buy a flaring tool at the uh, parts store, flare it by hand, and a cutoff tool. So it ain't the end of the world. You could make one of these on a Sunday afternoon if you needed to. Okay, so we got our return hose here. I didn't have any actual return hose. You gotta use power steering return line, stuff that's compatible with engine oil and ATF, power steering fluid, that type of stuff. You can't use fuel line, otherwise you're gonna have issues. So I had to do a little bend in here, modified that to from like a 45 to a 90. I'm gonna put a 90 in the end here. And tucks up there pretty good. I spent probably an hour and a half getting that pressure line, but it's all tucked up underneath. It clears our steering, it isn't rubbing on anything. I like it, but if we have to replace that in the field with a uh, factory one, it's gonna take a lot of work. So hopefully that thing doesn't go bad. Like I said, that's all tightened up. All we gotta do is put this new return hose on there. Once they show up, and we're good to go. I need to find a new alternator because this one looks pretty chewy. And of course I dropped it, taking it out of the tote. So we'll get the old man a new one of those. Uh, they don't offer a battery box for a 66 Buick, but they do for a Chevelle, you know, I think they'd be the same. No, they're a little different. The mounting holes are here and here for the Chevelle and that's got a hold down clamp. It's got a hold down bolt on a Buick and the mounting holes are there and there. They're both the same on the back side, but it looks like they're up a little bit higher on the Chevelle. And then there's this, whatever, hump in the middle that matches the hump in the middle of the inner fender that this doesn't have. So if we're gonna make that work, it's gonna take some doing, but such is life. I drug out my heater hoses, so I'll plumb those up. And then, yeah, we gotta figure out what we're gonna do with that water neck. I got new rubbers from Amazonia for the radmeator. 
what is that? Oh, we got our adapter fittings. The thread in here for our pressure and return inlet and outlet. And I got these guys from Amazon here. They were like, I don't know, 20 bucks for four of them. And they're the right diameter. So all we should have to do is drill a hole in the uh, core support to push that nipple through at the correct width. And then we should be good there. And then we'll have to fabric cobble a bracket for the top. And the radiator should be about good. Then we'll figure out some hoses. Definitely not flexi hoses. I kind of uh, got a selection of hoses laying around. Usually those factory LS radiator hoses for the pickups. They start on like the right hand side and swoop over to the left. Snag a couple of those up because there's all kinds of good bends and they're nice and long. You can cut them down. They're good hoses. That's what I actually did on the uh, F1 over there. So that's what, probably what we'll be doing on this as well. But we're calling her a night. I literally spent all night from... It's 10 to 10 right now, and from about 4 o'clock until now, so six hours, all I did was get the uh, bracketry up here and get an alternator on it that's junk, get a power steering pump and hoses on there. And I still need to do one more hose, and the other hose is used, but it should be good. Set an intake in place, found out that's gonna hit. Set a battery tray in place, found out that that's gonna need some modifications, so. Spent pretty near full eight hour day. And I don't uh, feel like I got much accomplished, but that's the way it goes. So yeah, six hours of labor for maybe uh, eight minutes content for you guys. All right, that's the way it goes. Hopefully we'll get this thing running here shortly because uh, we're kind of running out of time. I kind of set a deadline for this and we're about, What's today, August 16th? I wanna take this thing on a big road trip here, uh, like September 6th. So we got like three weeks and we're missing a whole bunch of stuff. It's gonna be close. Looky here, we got the radmeator in here. Uh, all I did was measure the distance. Uh, I set this in place and then where this weld is at, I marked down there on each side, and then I laid these down in that core support, drilled a hole for that knipple, pulled her through, sitting good. And we got Mickelson over here, tearing apart five, seven liter diesels of amazingness. And we stole his radiator hole down out of a square body Chevy. And it's too wide, but it's got the right shape for us here. You can see the knipple sticking through there. It sits up a little bit high, so we're gonna have to make a spacer. So I need to be six and three quarter inches narrower. So instead of just taking six and three quarter out of the middle, we're gonna take these two humps out and these two humps, my lovely lady lumps. Check it out. Bumps, check it out. And we're gonna try to keep all those cut square. Yeah, good luck. So I'm gonna spend way too much time making this. It's gonna look terrible. And my old man's gonna have the stock one. He's gonna have to do like minimal rework and it's gonna look fine. But got it marked out here. So I'm gonna go do some bands on. Alrighty, get stuff done. Would you check out this radiator hold down, Dolph? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, you don't care. Anywho, that looks pretty good. Even the uh, patiner matches what we got going on on the core support here. So I can either drill some holes right here and here, or we could drill some holes in this to line up with the factory holes, which is I think what I'm gonna do. I wanna drill as few holes in this car as possible, but this is gonna work out pretty good. Like I said, it sits up a little bit higher, so we'll have to put a spacer in there, but I am uh, pretty freaking happy about that. I'm tempted to have a sandwich to celebrate. That took, it wasn't too bad. By the time I measured, it took, took longer to figure out where I was gonna cut it and everything, because cutting it was quick. Getting it squared up took a little while. Welding it took a little while because it's so thin. I did it with the uh, 110 Miller 140 wire feed. Blew through a few times, not a big deal. Could have TIG welded it, that's the way it should have been done, but I just, we gotta get this thing done. We're running out of time. We're gonna lose the shop, right? But uh, I didn't want to spend a whole night on it. Instead I spent about an hour. And then uh, cleanup took a while with the old flapper disc, but I think that looks pretty freaking good. You know, if it was, straighter and painted and you know all matching color i think you'd have a tough time determining that it didn't come from this car and it's all stock gm stuff so winning okay 
we're calling her night. Oh, I did put the heater hoses in earlier. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I did. So we'll get that wrapped up on our next episode. Not next episode. Next time we're out here working on it. I don't know what we're going to be working on tomorrow because we got to have all this stuff done before we can work on this stuff. The joys of having a YouTube channel. And then we can figure out radiator hoses. And then we'll take a transmission cooler and we'll have to mount that up front because there's no, what do you call it? Fittings for that in there. So we're going to have to mount that up. And then we'll make some tranny lines and things are going to get pretty close wrapped up up here. Like I said, it's got this steam hole port and then we'll have to put either an overflow hose or an overflow tank. Probably just going to do an overflow hose unless we scrounge up a tank. And uh, we're, get, we're getting places. Ordered a belt today and idler and alternator and a bunch of random goodies. So, ready to call our night, pal? Me too. See you next time. All right, we got our radiator mounted. All I did was got a spacer. It's about three quarters of an inch tall. It's a piece of channel. Uh, drilled holes so that it'll bolt to the stock mounting locations on the core support. And then I welded a couple nuts in there so we could mount it with those two holes. Should be good to go, hopefully. Now, I'm just gonna play with some radiator hoses. So I got my collection of radiator hoses. Never mind those flexi hoses that are in there. And just playing around with some of these, seeing what we can do here. And I'm thinking on this upper neck anyway, if we can get that turned so it's perpendicular to the direction of travel with the car, then we only gotta have kind of one bend in there instead of kind of having an S curve that we got going on now. So I marked where it is angled right now and hopefully we can get this thing loose. Lucy goosey and spin that thing. I don't feel like we can just grab onto it and spin it without screwing something up. If we screw it up, we just gotta get a water pump, right? No big deal. And I suppose you could cut it and re-weld it, but our welding skills are not up to par for that. So let's figure out what we can do. A quick little update on the Buick here. We got our front pulleys all figured out, accessories belt on got that on the first guess and yeah i'll show you what we got going on here so if you'll remember the original water pump outlet was hitting on this throttle body linkage here so we took this guy and we beat the ever living snot out of it and it still didn't have enough clearance and we turned it reclocked it we stuck a 23 millimeter 12 point chrome craftsman socket in there and turned it and I'm sure it was gonna leak, but we found that these 2010 water pumps come out right about in here at a nice angle. So that's off a 2010 K2500 Silverado, six liter four wheel drive, yada, yada, yada. The thermostat pretty much bolts right up and the belt tensioner bolted right up. Got our correct spacing for everything. I don't know why everybody thinks they gotta turn around in my driveway is what it is, I guess. Uh, like I said, our pulley spacing's all the same. It mounts up to the engine the same. Heater hoses are the same, so way good. Only bad part is they're 206 freaking dollars at o -O 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 O'Reilly's. So then while I was at O'Reilly's, I kind of had an idea what I needed for hoses. Obviously, since I picked this up, I knew what diameter that needed to be. And uh, I had a hose laying around for the lower. So for the lower, I used a Gates 20, 538 and for the upper we used a master pro 21572 and so we took these two little chunks off the upper took this one off the top connection this off the bottom connection so he's not gonna put hose clamps on it and then took this off the lower and i'll have this video to reference if we ever fail a hose know what we need and yeah so no flexi hoses you go to the parts store you'd be a real nice human being you say hey can I take a look and back? I kind of got an idea what diameter I need and the length and the bends. And they'll usually let you go walk around and they have freaking aisles full of heater hoses and radiator hoses and power steering hoses and stuff. But then you don't have to use a flexi hose and look like a goon. It's just that easy. Don't be a hack. Don't use flexi hoses. And then while you're there, pick up a couple extras. 
I like these top radiator hoses off these factory LS pickups. This is a 23 184. So you get all kinds of different bends plus a bunch of length in there. And then this one, I same deal. Had I thought I would just cut it off here and that might work for our upper, but we use that other one. That's a 22 997 Gates. Uh, this one didn't have quite enough length on the bends. Uh, you could maybe make it work, but this 21 752 worked pretty dang well. I do say so myself. So uh, I got a new uh, alternator on there because the old one I bent the pulley when I dropped it and this back cover was missing and it just looked in bad shape. So we should be wrapped up up here. Now we got to figure out our throttle cable. I got some aftermarket throttle cables. One was too short. This other one we just don't like the way it mates up. So I'm going to go see if I can scrounge up an OEM one from like a 99 to 02 Chevy pickup before they went to drive by wire. Can't remember what year it was at the moment. And we'll see if that works out. And then we'll be pretty close. Still waiting on some fittings for the uh, Holly Sniper EFI. We got to put our inline regulator in there. This is an AEM regulator. It's got a transducer, AKA sensor on there. So we can read the uh, fuel pressure inside the car. That'll be pretty neat. So we got uh, fuel line from the pump will come up, come into the fuel rail on the right side, go over to the left side. It'll come off of that. Go into here, we'll have this side plugged and then the bottom will be a return. We're waiting on some fittings. And I think I'm gonna mount that right where the voltage regulator was. We'll make ourselves a handy dandy little bracket so we don't have to drill any holes in my dad's car. Put that up there and uh, yeah, like I said, we're just waiting on a little plumbing. I did buy some new injectors, but we took the old ones out of a couple of different fuel rails. Napa Todd hooked us up with one he had laying around. We threw them in some pine saw and we threw them in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and uh, those should be good to go. Right, Duff? Yeah. Tech tip of the day, you fill this up with water and then you just put this, you only gotta use that much pine saw and it's supposed to do the same thing. I'll let you know. And then old Mickelson's over here trying to put power brakes on his pickup. Don't buy the eBay kits for park for uh, boosted brakes. Just leave it alone. Yeah, just leave the stock manual brakes. Because they work. Yes. All right, back at it. All right, kids, it's another, I'd like to say lazy Sunday afternoon, but here we are banging it out. On the old Buick in between last week's project, next week's project, we try to get some time in on this thing. Today I got the intake manifold bolted down. I got our fuel rails installed, our injectors. We got our fuel pressure regulator mounted up using our old voltage regulator holes. So we got to do a little cleaning up on that. We mounted it in the wrong spot right off the bat. So I got to fill those holes in and we could paint it if we really wanted to, but we are in a time crunch here. So, so here's a crossover hose that goes from the left rail to the right rail. I originally had it in the front, but it kind of gets close to this I forget what they call this steam port that's got to go up to here. So then I got crazy and I thought, well, the fuel line from the car comes out right there. Uh, I got a new actual lines and fittings on order, but we don't have them right now. So this will work. And so this is a lot cleaner for that. The only thing I don't like is I got a hose running from the fuel pressure regulator up to this rail. So it comes in here, pressure goes through this rail, goes through that crossover to that rail, out of that rail, and it comes to our regulator and then it goes out and uh, returns back to the tank is how that works. So you could just block that off if you had a regulator in the line, like a Corvette style fuel filter, but, but based on not my experience, but a couple people that I talked to, they said those Corvette fuel pumps, they've been having a lot of problems with them lately. And I talked to another buddy who built some high end stuff way higher than this. And he said, yeah, run a regular regulator like that. And then, plumb it up like this where it comes out the last rail up to that back he says you won't have a problem and then we also got a transducer from holly here so we can feed this into the uh, electrical system and we should have live fuel pressure readings in the car so we should be able to do some diagnosis on the road if we have issues which we are not gonna have we're gonna put like 2500 trouble free miles on this thing as soon as we get it running hopefully so now i'm gonna lift the car up and we're gonna hook up this steel line back there to our uh, tank and then we're gonna have to run a return line back because this car did not have a return easy peasy lemon squeezy so i wanted to give you a quick update with what we got going on here this sunday so i don't know if there'll be more updates today or not but see you later all right another midweek 
late night quick update on the old skylark here i got all my parts in for my fuel line plumbing so i got some like legit braided fuel line and then uh these crimp on ends i don't know what you call them crimp whatever you tighten them into one another and it's black all the fittings are black i got o-ring boss to and fittings all that good stuff so we got rid of all that ugly silver stuff that looks like it should be on a combine or a tractor and yeah everything plumbed up pretty good here hopefully it's not going to rub through yeah looking uh pretty all right here still got to run our return all the way to the back and then we got to hook it up at the tank there for our pressure and a return but uh, i don't want to put it up on the hoist tonight because i'm gonna put it back down so mojo can use the hoist tomorrow because we got him doing some other stuff so i think i'm gonna Try to find, where it is, our uh, Holly Sniper Terminator? I think it's Terminator. I'll be back. The Terminator X early truck kit. I'm gonna open that up and uh, start trying to put that on the engine and see what we got there. So if we gotta order some parts, like some different injectors or different sensors, we got time because time is not on our side at this point. So that's what I'm gonna do. See you wherever the next update is. Fuel line plumbing. That's what we did tonight. Okay. Not much of an update tonight. As you can see, our night is wrapped up. We did get our coil packs bolted on. So that's good. We got that going for us. They're all greasy, but we don't care at this point in the game. We got no time for that type of stuff. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, Mojo's been using the snot out of the hoist during the day, so we're gonna roll this thing off, and we're gonna call it a night, and hopefully we get some more stuff done tomorrow. Today's been hectic with a bunch of visitors and wrapping up this week's video, just all kinds of excuses, so calling it a night, we're gonna get some rest. It's gonna be a long weekend of thrashing on this thing. All right, until next time. All right, back for our uh, nightly update on Grandma Lil here. So we got the cooling fans mounted. There's our SPAL, S-P-A-L. I don't know what they're going by. SPAL, you're my pal. No, you're my pal, my favorite pal. We just got some other pal fans. We got those mounted up. That went surprisingly well. It, they make a, a bracket here that fits up with the radiator real good. Yeah, everything's good. We still got to wire them up. I got the correct thermostat housing on there. These newer water pumps require a little bit different thermostat housing. We got a thermostat in there. We got our... I forget what this hose that goes from here to uh, there is called, but we got that on there, quarter inch line. And then we got our breather. We do have a catch can. I don't know if we're gonna have time to put the said catch can installed. I think it'll install right here, but we're just gonna run that out the bottom there. We're duff sniffing. Oh, you are a dirty dog. Yeah, you. For now, biggest thing tonight was get the fans mounted. We got our radiator hoses all tightened up slowly but surely oh and also on these fans they come with a connector that i wasn't such a fan of they're kind of a spade clip where you know one was vertical and one was horizontal i wasn't a fan of that so we put some weather packs on there so it's gonna be way more good the terminator x has a trigger wire it won't run those fans because they draw too much amperage so we need to uh, put a relay in there and uh, holly said to use this msd performance High current solid state relay, part number 7564-8C. So, yeah, we'll see. They said it's uh, really easy to wire up and really awesome. And that's what we like. Awesome and easy. I have yet to meet her yet, but anywho. Yeah, she's probably a real nice gal, kind of like a Tiffany. I don't know if we're gonna get this done tonight. Probably not, so we're gonna open it up and look at it. And we will uh, see you tomorrow. Yeah, tonight was a whole big night of I guess we did that fan stuff, and then the Bib the Bandit was over and BSing, sitting in his favorite chair while I worked. And then we had to load up an International D Series 37 to 39 model cab for him, and give him a tour of the yard. And didn't get much done. So there's your update for tonight. It's now Thursday evening. We got the Labor Day weekend, so we got Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Tuesday night, and I think we're planning to leave Wednesday. So we got five days, and we got some work to do. And if we gotta order parts, it's not gonna be here till Wednesday. So, wish us luck. We're so screwed. Well, it's Saturday morning. 
going to go to the birthday party last night for my godson. So got that out of the way and then didn't get anything done afterwards because like any three-year-old's birthday party, there was adult beverages there. Anyway, Mojo got the Astro Van all cleaned up, so we got that by the highway for sale. So hopefully that sells so we can keep the shop. The Skylark's back on the hoist. Got the Diffy cover off because I need to know the rear axle ratio for when we set up the Holly Terminator X system. And you wouldn't believe what this is. 278s. We're going to be doing like 1,200 RPMs at 80 mile an hour. The reason you can tell is 14 and 39 right there. 39 divided by 14, 278. She's a one wheel peel, and I'm pretty sure that is the original oil. We're gonna take our super scraper here. And now we're gonna scrape the gaskets off this son of a biscuit using the best galdang scraper in the world, the super scraper. This is the SS1 model, which at the time of this uh, recording, we got in stock. So get them while you can, because they go fast, but these things are freaking awesome. No lie. Also, I put right stuff silicone on there. It's really hard to get off, but I don't like the gaskets because I don't have gaskets and I always got right stuff. Not always, but usually. So we're going to clean that up and stick it back together and put some fresh 8090 in it because that's what it comes with from the factory. And then we're going to work on something else this morning. All right, back at it. We got our Diffy cover back in place. And you notice we didn't spray it some neon color because we're not techers. Got her filled up with 8090. And then while we were here, we ran wires for the fuel pump. Holly's using green for the power on the Terminator X system, so I ran a green wire. And black is ground, and so we ran that to uh, the ground right here to the frame for easy access. No need to run that all the way to the front. We'll uh, ground the battery to the frame, should be good to go. And I got this green wire going all the way up. You don't want to tie it to fuel lines, so I uh, only did that in a couple spots, but mostly tied to the brake line or the frame or other things. And then tech tip of the day, get yourself a round rod like this, mount it somewhere, and then throw your spool of wire over it. Makes it easy for feeding it. Learn that from Mojo. He's a smart feller. Okay, I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I gotta look at my list. The list is getting shorter though. Nobody's bought the minivan yet. It's only been like an hour and a half. Yeah, that's how long it takes to run some wire and uh, clean up a diff cover, put it all together. Pretty sad. I better give you an update. I just hooked up the map sensor. There's there's a neat little sensor that's built into the ECU, so we just had to hook a vacuum hose up to it. I was going to take the fitting out of our transmission cooler, and our transmission cooler decided to crap the bed. So I got a different one. It's a Hayden aftermarket one that already had the hose barbs on it, so we didn't need any fittings. So that's in there. Utilize the same two holes. I just had to drill this hole in the Hayden transmission cooler. And we'll have to make something to tie it in at the bottom, but we got our lines all hooked up there. Set a battery in it just to see where everything's gonna be at. I set an air intake in there that I don't really like, so I'm gonna try to round up some three and a half inch tube on a Saturday. This is our intake air temperature sensor, so we need to drill a hole in that once we get that all finalized. I finally found a throttle cable I like. I think it's off of like a 9902 Silverado pickup with a 4.3. Who'd have thought the V6 ones are longer? Crazy, huh, Duff? My connector didn't show up for my alternator via the Amazon, so we're gonna have to figure out something there. What else did we do? We got the ECU screwed to the firewall, so I had to put two more holes in this poor car. I got our wire harness pretty much all laid out where it's gotta go and tucked in as good as I can on the engine part. We still got some figuring to do back there. This is our starter wire for our trigger wire. I didn't have any purple. And then we got a, I think the green is for the fuel pump. Red is constant power. And then there's a key power in there. And there's same for the transmission harness right here. And then one of these, I think the gray has to go to the brake switch to unlock the torque converter. So I got a drill hole in the firewall for this. I think I'm gonna have to modify this bracket. This is the stock GM bracket off of, you know, 99 to 02. And uh, I don't like the angle that this is at. So I think if we trim this piece off and tip it down, it'll be just fine. So we'll do that. I mean, this would probably be all right for driving across town, but driving across the country, I think it's gonna chew into that whatever cable guide what you call it got all our plug wires on we got some sweet excel wires and they got ceramic ends on it so they don't get burned through by our exhaust manifolds not headers uh hooked up a battery cable down there hooked up a ground uh, there's a couple ground cables 
that were in this harness. Got those grounded to the head. Got the body grounded to the head as well. I should go underneath and hook up a ground cable to the chassis. And we should be good on grounds. Other than, like I said, there's a ground in here we need to hook to a ground. And then there's one in the main harness. Training harness, main harness. So I guess this is like a, one of these is the input harness. So like your crank sensor, cam sensor, idle air temperature, coolant sensor, oil sensor. That's all your inputs. And then your outputs for like your uh, coils and your fuel injectors. And then for some reason, I have mismatched coils. These are the square coils and those are the round coils. I don't know, I've torn apart a few LSs over the years. So apparently we got some mismatched coils. But underneath the car, what did we get done? Let me look at, let me look at my notes. Let me look at my notes. We got the starter and the crank sensor wiring done. We got our trans cooler done. Fuel pump wiring's done. The plug wires, transmission cooler hose is done. Yeah, so we got uh, just all this stuff to do. Throttle cable, air intake, airflow or air intake temperature sensor. Figure out the engine harness. We got a, one more ground for the chassis. Fan wiring, alternator wiring, gotta tie up all the relays. Gotta put the exhaust on that we took off to do the starter wiring, or the tranny cooler lines actually. Fluids, wipers, PCV, fuel cap, flywheel cover. Yeah. All we got left is everything, Duff. There might be a chance we make it. And it is now five o'clock. I don't remember when I gave you guys my last update, but uh, it's probably this morning at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So in seven hours, minus the lunch break, doesn't feel like we're getting very far. Okay, I'm getting back at it. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna do it, Duff. And you're gonna get to spend a week at the lake while I drive in the heat with this hot car. You disappointed about that? You'll be fine. You ready to wrap her up for the night? Yeah, me too. So, I'll show you what we got going on here. I plugged the car's stock harness into that bulkhead down there and kind of figured out where everything was. If you uh, want to do a bunch of electrical, get yourself one of these power probes. You can test for ground and power, and you can also send ground and power, and it beeps, and it's got a light on it, so you can see what you're doing, and it's got a different beep for power and different beep for ground. Really freaking handy. So we got all our wiper stuff hooked up. Uh, this is for our voltage regulator. I figured out which one is our signal for that. Uh, these other voltage regulator wires we're not going to use because this is internally regulated. We are going to have to run a power wire to this stud. The alternator was on that side of the Buick engine, so we're going to have to extend that wire back over here. We'll use the existing crank wire to the engine, and we'll use the existing wire from the starter that was hooked up to the battery and came up here and fed this bulkhead. And what else? This is for the kick down, I think. Buick had some goofy transmission and had it kicked down that was electronic built into the throttle linkage. This is our coil wire. So this is gonna power up this cool little MSD relay box we got, solid state relay. Uh, this is for our temp light and then uh, oil light. Those are just lights on the dash, so we're not gonna worry about those. Our Terminator X system is gonna monitor all those and we'll have a display in there, so dummy lights we don't care about. Uh, this is for our old alternator, again, since it's Internally regulated, we don't need that stuff anymore. This is the wire I was telling you we gotta extend. Basically that does, it's the big wire, red wire with the cover on it. And uh, when the alternator charges, it charges through the starter. Well, it charges the battery because the wires are all tied together. And then we got our existing crank wire right there we're gonna use. And this is that main power that uh, feeds the bulkhead and everything else. So you got your battery cable going to your battery hooks up to this on the starter and that back feeds everything. And then this was your kind of jumper wire for uh, when your bypass is your ballast resistor when you're uh, cranking it over. Basically sends 12 volts of coil. So we're not gonna use that. Like I said, we're not gonna use the blue wire and the green wire and uh, some of that stuff. I don't know if we're gonna strip it out of there. We are running out of time. Today's my dad's birthday. Uh, I was hoping to have this car done to show him, but I, didn't get st I told him happy birthday, so. You know, and we're making up for it. So at least I, I uh, told him happy birthday. Yeah, where else were we at? Uh, kind of got some wires fed around here. These two red wires, one's for the ECU and one is for the transmission 
whatever controller. Those gotta have constant power, battery power. These two gotta have key power. We're gonna hook those up to that cool little solid state relay that we got from MSD. Uh, these are the two wires we gotta hook up for the ECU. Those gotta have battery power and ground. And we gotta, here's our, what we got for an air intake. It is tight in here, super tight. So I'm not happy with that. I bought two coal air intakes, one for like a 9906 GM and then one just mystery one and cobbled some parts together and I'm still not happy. And so we went to the diesel shop in town. We got some three and a half inch tube. I know it looks terrible, but that's what we got. I had some four inch exhaust for diesel that ain't gonna work. This is three and a half and it like is tight against the pulley and tight against the fan. So we're gonna have to make something to hold it and it's tight against the radiator and we can't go over the top of the radiator hose cause then we get into our hood and we're not cutting up the hood. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have top post battery cables and then the side posts are gonna feed everything else. So the negative side post is gonna feed this harness the positive is gonna feed this harness and also our cool relay. I'm gonna talk about this relay. Show you this freaking relay. This thing is made by MSD. It's uh, part number 7564-HC. So you put your battery power here and you just gotta have a tiny little ground wire. I think it's can be like 18 to 22 gauge. Hardly has to be anything. And then you got your output. So we're gonna run our, our fan on Fans on one and two, one fan on that one, one fan on this one. And then three and four are gonna be our ignition signal that's gonna power up the transmission controller and then one's for the engine controller. And you can trigger these by either ground or power. So we're gonna use our existing ignition coil wire and we're gonna send it to three and we're gonna run a jumper wire over to four so when i turn on the key it's gonna power up three and four the ecu for the transmission and the engine controller and then one and two for the fans that's gonna be powered by the ecu so we're gonna take a ground wire from the ecu to one and two so when the ecu tells the fans to kick on kicks them on so look at how clean this is you got you know however many outputs you got just one wire for those and you got one wire for an input and the only other wires you got to run there is this little tiny ground and then basically a battery cable. So that's what we're gonna use here, just a regular side post battery cable, stuff it in there. There's a bunch of instructions in here. You size this cable accordingly to how much amperage. I think it's uh, 140 volts max, 100 or, uh, amps, 140 amps. So each one of these is, is rated up to 35 amps. So more than enough for what we need. I think we only need like, I'm not even gonna say, we don't need much for the ECU. Fans are gonna take a little bit more. So this thing is gonna be super awesome. I'll show you where we're gonna mount this thing. I drilled a couple more holes in Grandma Lil here. Sorry, Dad. That's gonna mount right there. So we got a real short run for our positive, and then we're gonna have our uh, ECU wires going over there. That's actually the red and white ones. And then we're gonna have to extend our, I think it's yellow wire from the coil. That'll go up here and trigger that. And then uh, a couple wires off the ECU that are gonna be down there to trigger the fans. And then our fan outputs going down here. This thing's gonna be super freaking awesome. If you haven't uh, got one of these and you got plans to do some electrical relay running, wiring, and you're not an expert electrical, elect, elect, electrocutor like me, you get one of those, it makes your life so much easier. Because on a regular relay, you got five terminals. You got your 30, which is constant power, your 85, which is constant ground, and then you got your 80, I don't even know what they are, 87 and 87A, and then there's another one. Anyway, there's five wires on there. There's your normally closed, normally open, your trigger wires, and they're, and they're super confusing. This is way easy. Any dumb dumb can do it. So. Check into those things, they're, they're worth the money. Right, Dove? Yeah, all right. We're calling our night. Long day today, we got another long day tomorrow. Hopefully we get real close. We get 
a little wiring down here and we get that intake kind of situated and we should be able to dump some fuel in this thing and crank it over oh i did fill up the transmission because i knew i was going to be cranking it over we, i have been cranking it over with the, the blue wire for our starter i don't know why i was cranking it over but i felt like i needed to crank it over for some reason and before i did that i wanted to fill up the transmission and i did that and of course uh it ran out on the floor oh i also filled up the power steering uh, I found out that I hadn't tightened the pressure line, so I got that tight. I don't know why the transmission is leaking, but it is. So hopefully that's not an issue. I think it's just because uh, I dumped like two and a half gallons in. I think they hold three gallons. I dumped two and a half in, and we got to fill up the cooler, and you know, you got to turn it a little bit instead of just dumping it all in. So I think it was just running out the breather up top on the side of the transmission. I don't have a transmission to show you that on. But anyway, I'm done yapping. Ah, I need to get some rest. And then we're gonna uh, come back and do her all again tomorrow. Are you excited? No. He's not excited. I really don't uh, like using these dual terminal batteries to uh, utilize all the posts, but it's the, it's the quickest way to do it right now. We, uh, time is not our friend. Okay, I'm out. Well, she's lunchtime on Sunday, and if it looks like I haven't gotten anywhere, it's because I really haven't. So I've spent all morning just kind of rerouting wires, unhooking connectors, fishing wires down. I did strip out the main harness for the car and took out the stuff that we didn't need over there. And we got this MSD solid state relay sitting in place. I got our trigger wires for our fans in place. And then we got the ECU and TCU wires in place. We still gotta hook up the triggers for those. We gotta hook up our ground. For the uh, main power, I just got this side post. It's a negative. Don't worry about the colors. The reason I use that one is I don't have any positives that have this uh, sweet little 14 gauge wire coming off there because that's what we're gonna power up the main power for our ECU. We're gonna splice her to that and then do something similar on the ground side. Yeah, put a bunch of clamps underneath. I moved the oxygen sensor from that side to this side and then I plugged this side with a spark plug because that's what Holly said to do because I don't have the fancy just regular 18 millimeter plug. Put a bunch of clamps down there. Got a clamp here on her battery cable, which is too long. Anywho, I'm gonna go have lunch and uh, then we're gonna come back and uh, do some more wiring. Still gotta do pretty much all of it. Like I said, all morning I've just been rerouting things so they hopefully don't rub through on the ride. Or at any point, any point, any point, any given time. Because you don't want your wires chafing. Gold bond don't fix that. All right, lunch time. So we're back from dinner, lunch. What do you call it where you're at? I call it lunch and then supper. Dinner is in the evening. But anywho, uh, I think we're finally wrapped up with the just of the wiring. We're still waiting on this connector for the alternator. Uh, I got a buddy who's got one off a junk car. Uh, 06 Impala apparently fits. So we're gonna have to make something for that. Uh, but we can run a jumper wire for now. We just gotta hook it up to that brown wire there. And we gotta tidy it up a little bit. But otherwise everything's kind of in place here. I got my hole drilled for my mass airflow sensor. I gotta make a bracket for this air cleaner because it is tight between the radiator hoses. Both of them, and then uh, real close to this pulley here, and uh, real close to the fan, so pretty much tight everywhere. I drilled that miserable hole in the firewall that I was dreading for the uh, accelerator cable. Now I need to modify this bracket because it's shooting up, and it's probably gonna hit the hood, so we gotta tip this down. Yeah, we're gonna have to modify it a little bit, so we have to put a little tab, because you can't just have it this single bolt holding it, otherwise it's gonna wanna pivot, so we gotta a little tab on there. I'll show you what the uh, one that Holly sent. See, it's got here's that bolt hole, and there's that little tab right there. So we just got to weld a little tanger on there to get it to hold it. This one won't work for us because it's meant for aftermarket cables. And since we're using a stock style one, we would have to modify this one anyway. So we're just going to throw this on the shelf for a rainy day. Modify that one. We are getting real close. We could probably fire it up right now, actually. I think if we put some fuel in the tank, you know, don't be a wank, fill your tank. But I want to get that throttle cable done and I should probably get this air intake situation wrapped up and we got to put coolant of some sort in there. Yeah, the list is getting shorter, but we're still plugging away. 
Stay tuned. I think Duff is uh, sick of this project. I'm getting there too. We got six-ish gallons of gas in there. We got three-ish gallons of coolant. Hey, look at this, nothing's leaking. The brake fluid, the brakes were working, but she was about that close to being empty. So we cleaned that all out. Put some fresh Blake fluid in there. Blake fluid? Yeah, that's what we're calling it. And uh, I got the fuel line into a bucket down there. So when we turn the pump on, we're gonna clear out that line. Seem like a good idea? Yeah, because everything's new except for the steel line there. And uh, I should have blown it out. Some people are probably like, yeah, you should have replaced it. Yeah, well, should have. I got filters here and my fittings didn't show up for the uh, inline fuel filter, so we're just rocking it. So we gotta get everything out of there that we can and hope we get good gas from here to Kentucky or uh, find some fittings we'll bring the filters with. And uh, yeah, it should be great. We'll bring some extra injectors and uh, an extra fuel pressure regulator because I don't know what else could really go bad. Okay, back at it. Oh, so here's our little Terminator X three and a half inch display. It's all touchscreen. They give you this cute little stylus to run it, which is like a pen for computer geeks. We gotta go through a, a whole startup process. We gotta turn the key on and cycle the foot feet and enter our rear tire diameter, our idle speed, how many liters, how big of a camshaft we got in it, rear axle ratio, a bunch of that stuff. Which uh, cam or crank, crank sensor we got in there. So uh, we're gonna do that now, and we're gonna hook up the battery cables for the first time and see what happens. Should be great. I don't see why it wouldn't. We're so good at starting LSs. I think it's a disaster. We need to get that done next. I wanted to drive that this summer, and summer's over, because uh, tomorrow is Labor Day. Keys off, transmission's in park. Our grounds are hooked up. Oh, there's some sparkage there when I hook that up. Powering up the ECUs. We don't get any flames. Yeah, I know you're not happy. I'm gonna put some red tape on this negative cable that identifies as a positive cable. You know, because we're classy like that. Dad, you got your uh, work cut out for you rewiring this. It really isn't that bad, but it needs a good week's worth of evenings of tidying stuff up. Especially, I just don't like what's going on here. I feel like I should just put one big terminal stud over here for all the grounds and one for the powers and go from there. We'll get it figured out one of these days. No sparks there. Let's go up the top cable. Top cable? Yeah. Or other positive. No sparks. No, I think it says to turn the key on, so we'll see what happens. Key is in the run position. And it's telling us to perform a TPS auto set before startup. Got our stylus, we're gonna click OK. Do not attempt to start the vehicle until you are told to do so in the instructions below. Gotcha. Uh, you need to go through this process, otherwise it's not gonna fire the injectors or the coils. So it's, it's just gonna crank and not do anything good. And as you can tell, the key is on, and it's not running the fuel pump, so we gotta go through all this before we even kick on the fuel pump. So if you're installing a Holley Terminator X and you turn the key on, you're wondering why your fuel pump isn't running the first time, it's fine. You gotta set all the uh, settings. So I think we go to the wizard. Calibration wizard. It is a GM LS. It is not a Coyote. Firing order, funny thing, I didn't know this about LS's. It's 187-265-43. It's not 1843-6572. Now it says engine displacement units. We're gonna go with liters, cause uh, I don't know how many cubic inches this is. Like 366? Engine displacement in liter. Oh man, this goes up to 32.8 liters. That's a, that's a freaking hog there. Six liters. Target idle speed. I did a bunch of Google boxing. And uh, yeah, you know how that goes. I got anywhere from 500 to 900. So we're gonna go with 600. Because the best one I found was 575 to 625. Split the difference there, 600. Camshaft below 235 because we are stock. That's degrees of duration. We have a 24 tooth ignition 
Apparently they made some updates to the program since this was uh, revised on April 29th, 2019. Fuel pressure, 43 or 60 are my options. We're, it's default into 43 and most everything else has been default. So we're just gonna uh, go with the default to 43. Injectors, we got OEMs, because we're poor. And the part numbers on these injectors are 253-176-28. Power adder, none for now. Map sensor, we got the internal one bar, drive by wire, no. Transmission control, yes. We got a GM 4L60-5E with the 175 second gear, which is pre-2009. The post-2009 got, here's where we got a problem. There's, there's two GM 4L60Es. One with a 175 second gear and one with a 163 second gear. How do we know? We call the transmission wizard. All right, did some Google boxing because uh, the transmission wizard did not answer. So we're going with 163. Oh, it defaults to 175. How much difference is there between a 163 and 175? We're going with 175 because that's the default. Holly knows more than us. Ah, everything on the internet says 163. We're going 163. Tire diameter, 27.7 is what you get when you put a 215-75 R15. You take 215 divided by 25.4, you multiply that by 0.75, and you multiply it by 2, because you got two sidewalls, and you add 15. Rear end ratio, 278. Boring. And then select the start button to upload custom Terminator X calibration to your ECO. Congratulations! You have completed the setup wizard. It is now time to perform a TPS auto set. Please cycle the ignition to complete the operation. Woohoo! <laughs> cycle the Kia here to pump run. We got some fuel in our bucket, so I'm gonna turn around again and get a little bit more fuel in there. That's a good sign. Fuel pumps run. I remember reading Hot Rod magazine in probably the mid 90s, late 90s. I was a I don't know, grade schooler. Seeing these aluminium Swedish nut lays advertised and I was like, I'm never going to be the snob that has one of those. Here I am, the snob with the uh, billet of aluminium Swedish nut lathe. It is handy for these lines. I wish I had two to hold the other fitting, so we'll probably be getting another one. They're pretty sweet. They don't mar up your fittings. They look nice and pretty. It really makes your wiring stand out. All right now I'm going to turn the key off. The pump runs for five seconds, so I turn the key back off after that cycle. I'm going to turn the key back on, and then we're going to go and uh, calibrate the throttle position sensor. And we're also going to fix any fuel leaks, but there's not going to be any. Just like there's no coolant leaks. It's pretty dry up here. It's pretty dry down there. Form a TPS auto set before startup. Okay. Ignition is on because you're lit up. Engine's clearly not running. Start. Slowly press the pedal to the floor. Then slowly release. Do this twice. We're just gonna do it by hand. Because we're lazy. TPS auto set was successful! Alright, this is going way too smooth. But it's gonna continue to go that way until we have a celebratory sandwich. Done. So uh, we should be a good one. All systems are go! Hey, did they launch that? That uh, ship to the moon or whatever they were gonna do the other day? Okay, the vehicle should be ready to be started. That's what this says. Crank the engine and look at the per RPM parameter. Well, it's a good thing I left our poor man's loser switch. So we're gonna crank it over and look at the RPM. This thing's probably just gonna light off. It should change to syncing, indicating the ECU is syncing with the RPM signal for an instant and then show an RPM signal. The engine should fire and run and come to an idle. Wow. Holly is hopeful here. We might as well do it. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. I was happy for a second, and then it clattered. It's starting to sound real good right before it died. Maybe uh, Holly shut it off for a second. Thing lit right off. Well, I don't know why it died. Try it again. Nice! 
She don't sound so bad. I'm gonna check some fluids, make sure there's nothing laying on the manifolds, getting hot. Make sure there's nothing rubbing in the belt. And uh, probably crack a sandwich. Cause that's what we do. All right, we're uh, getting a little heat in her. She's uh, baking the oil off the manifolds. Everything's going pretty good. The fan is running, just the one fan, because I don't know if it kicks the second one on later, but and it's turning the right way because it sucks the paper up to the radiator. So that's good. No leaks, uh, put about a pint of ATF in there. Uh, topped off the power steering a little bit. Checked it out, power steering's working good. Our fuel pressure is a bit low. Oil pressure is a little bit low, and that's probably just because it's a tired engine, but uh, we should see if we can adjust that fuel pressure. I think that's what I am gonna do now. Sound good? Yeah. Otherwise, everything is going pretty swimmingly. Fuel pressure, not really concerned about oil pressure, kind of concerned, but again, there's really nothing I can do. No. A lot of these LSs just have low oil pressure. I suppose we could have put a pump in there while we were at it, but yeah, she's fine. Oh, look who decided to show up once it's running, huh? Think we're going for an RIDE? Yeah, we will. Hopefully tonight. We need to find somebody to help us put a hood on or just set it off to the side. You're right, set it off to the side. All right, this thing runs pretty good. I'm happy so far. We got a ton of loose ends to tie up, but I'm gonna crack a celebratory sandwich. The last of the Mohicans right here, July 19th, 2021. We gotta doctor up that throttle cable. We got to put lug nuts on it. We got to check the tire pressure, so I should grease it. We don't know if the fuel gauge works. The wipers don't work, but I noticed there's a fuse missing. So hopefully that's just a matter of putting fuse in. I got new blades for it. Yeah, there's a really long list. I want to tidy up a few things, tranny cooler lines, uh, tranny cooler bracket. So we're probably not going to go for a ride tonight because it's uh, 7.30. We got about uh, an hour of daylight. We gotta check lights. Oh, crickets. Ugh, got them. But we're getting there. Now it's just all the little piddly stuff that really sucks. Battery hold down, put the hood on it. Coolant overflow if we decide to do that stuff. There's a bunch of maybes on there, but like fuel cap, I gotta find a fuel cap. I don't know where that ended up at. Mojo threw it away or I threw it away or dad stole it for something else, so. Since we don't have a fuel filter, uh, we should probably have a fuel cap so we don't get more crap in there. So, plenty to do. We're gonna get back at it. This video's uh, really falling apart, but uh, we gotta get this done or we're gonna lose the shop. So, sorry. I'll give you an update later. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Look at that, fixed all the wiring. Still gotta do the uh, throttle cable. And by fixing the wiring, I mean I put the hood on it, so it's a lot darker in there now. You know who looks better in the dark? Everybody. That guy. Pookie came over and helped me set the hood on. Look at it. What? Look at that alignment. Wowza. Just right. Have you done this before? Many times. Many times. No, I, in my past life, I was a bodyographer. A bodyographer. Yeah, that means I did bodies. <laughs> dead, dead bodies. Dead bodies. <laughs> All right, we're getting too deep in the uh, guava cart, so uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Sleep tight. Well, it is 6 p.m. on Monday, Labor Day, September 5th, I think. Anyway, uh, Mojo came to work today because he's a good dude and doesn't know what vacation is. And him and I pretty much just banged out on this thing for, yeah. Eight hours, nine hours. Uh, wasn't much to film. Uh, pretty much just tidying stuff up, tidying wires up. I did swap the coil packs. I got the round coils on both sides. I just had it on this side before and then I cleaned those up. We had it apart. Uh, tidied up the wiring. The master cylinder is now leaking down the firewall. So that's freaking awesome. So I'm gonna have to see if I can find a master cylinder or a kit. Napa Todd doesn't have one on hand, of course. And uh, like I said, it's a national holiday today. So Mojo is just, the fabrication machine his stuff is leaves a little bit to desired aesthetically but uh you could hook a snow plow to anything that he builds any bracket so we need to come up with some type of terminology like mojo fab built like i don't know 
Kind of like this. Strong like ox, dumb like plow. We, we, need a, we need a saying for how Mojo builds things. I mean, it, it's crude, but it's built like a tank. It ain't going nowhere. So comment down below with what you think we should have for a, a sticker for Mojo. We'll have a caricature of Mojo on there and then something about Mojo built and I don't know. I, I can't think of anything. I thought of something earlier, but of course I forgot. But anyway, he uh, fabricated a little bracket to uh, hold the bottom of the trans cooler, modified the one that I had. Look at this freaking battery hold down. I mean, you could literally hook onto it and pull this thing out of a snowbank. And then he's got a bracket underneath here coming off this idler or tensioner uh, holding our air intake. And I mean, he moved the battery over so we'd have clearance there. And uh, yeah, this thing is stout. It is tight against the fan, but we got like, I don't know, three quarters of an inch here. And then like three eighths of an inch from the bottom radiator hose and then a half inch up here. It's tight, but it's where it needs to be. I had to pull the intake off because I didn't have the, I didn't put a fitting in there for the PCV and you gotta have that. Otherwise bad things happen. You gotta be able to crank that or uh, ventilate the uh, crank case. And uh, yeah, I put a shorter battery cable in over here. What else did we do today? I don't know, it, it just took all day. I finished up this bracket up here for the uh, throttle linkage, and then I modified the inside a little bit. We don't have full throttle. Yeah, I know, how freaking sad is that? We got about 90%, so we'll see where that goes, and we can always modify it a little bit more. I didn't wanna cut anything up, because this is the only cable I got. If, once I get another cable on hand, then we'll go ahead and cut away and uh, make that work or modify the pedal so that we get full throttle. It ain't a big deal. We don't need full throttle. It's just a, just a grandma car. Front tires didn't show up, obviously, because it's a holiday. Maybe they'll show up tomorrow in time. Um, but otherwise, if not, I've got some 205.70s. I want to run 205.65, stay with what we got. These tires aren't that bad. They'd probably be just fine, but they're 16 years old, so it's kind of sketchy. Uh, I got the wipers working. Clean the windshield. Check the cigarette lighter works. You know, because you got to have that if you're going to Chicago, that, and I'm sure we're going to be charging some cell phones and stuff on this trip we're going on. And, uh, yeah. I did find the original uh, Protecto plate inside. This car was shipped to Brookings, South Dakota, to the dealership there, and it had somebody's name on it, so I don't know if they didn't take the car or they died or what, a Peterson. And then it was transferred up to Rainus Motors here in Lisbon, North Dakota. And that's where my great grandpa, was it S.O. Hansen bought it. His, uh, he always, I always thought his name was Sam, but his real name was Selmer. I'd go by Sam too. I don't know what the O stands for, but yeah, the, there's, so there's two Protecto plates in here. The original one from Brookings, when it shipped to Brookings, and then also at Rainus Motors. So it's, it's pretty awesome that uh, we got two Protecto plates and one of them's got my great grandpa's name on it. Anywho, I'm gonna fire this thing up, get some heat into it. And then we're gonna finally do what you love to do so much. Wanna go for a ride? Yeah, you love rides. All right, let me fire it up. We'll see you in a bit. Oh, and then I forgot uh, Grandpa Sam. He was in World War I, and so we got a bunch of letters that he wrote back to my great grandma. He was in France, and so uh, he was part of the uh, 42nd Division, uh, Rainbow Division veterans. I don't, I don't know, I'm not real keen on that stuff. Um, I didn't really know he was in the war until earlier this year. Digging into some family history. Cool stuff. Um, yeah. We're gonna go for a rip though. Long day of boring stuff that you guys didn't want to see, so you just get to listen to me talk about it. Mojo is the fabricating machine, so what are we gonna call it? Think of his uh, terminology. Mojo fab, mojo built. I don't know. I think it I think it'll it'll be a good one. All right, uh, vitals, everything looks good. We're at about uh, 204 degrees for you uh, standard carbureted Gen 1 small block guys. Uh, these things kind of run 200, 210, even 220. Pretty standard, 13.4 uh, volts. Idle on about 675 RPMs. Um, yeah, put a little bit, uh, probably a pint into the transmission. Brakes are still where they need to be. Back her out. Throttle response is kind of delayed, both uh, on accelerate and decel. So I think that's part of the learning process. We just got to drive it. That's the other thing is, oh, she's kind of jumpy. I think that's part of this learning process. You have to drive like 
like not our normal but like normal people normal also you notice we don't have a duff cam we're uh we're down a camera today so yeah bear with us we're gonna run to town put some petrol in this thing for the first time and 17 ish years there's second shutter and get the uh, throttle response kind of where it needs to be I did so the throttle response has nothing to do with any of the cable stuff we did I did uh, rev it up a few times when it was on the hoist and we got a, we got a neutral in the uh, 4060 e right now why is that so she's way in the back. I'm gonna put some petrol in. You just hang out here. Electric fans are running, good deal. It took 20 gallons, so this thing's got a big tank in it because we put like six in. And I can't imagine we burned much in the uh, probably 20 minutes it's been running. All right, oh, slobber all over dad's seat. Whoopsies. good torque converter bolts should all be tight Oh, 
good. I don't know why it's so silly in town. I guess we'll see. Fuel gauge doesn't work except the full, so that's handy. And that's the only gauge we got because oil temp and gen are all light. Sensor or a bad sensor, yeah. No, it says we're going to five six mile an hour, so I don't know what's going on there. We'll have to check her out. Hopefully, it's uh, not a big deal. Maybe we can even find a parts store that's got a sensor on hand. So, otherwise, a pretty successful test drive. All right, so we're back in the shop. I got this thing laid out exactly how I want it. I got speed in the middle, torque converter lockup, whether it's on or off, right above that. RPM right below that and then on the right we got what gear we're in Temp Voltage oil pressure and on the left side. We got throttle position sensor percentage 0 to 100 and I just found out watch me mash the pedal 56% so we're getting half throttle as well. I said like 90% earlier, so uh, We're gonna need to fix that fuel economy. It's kind of neat. We were pulling like 23, 24 miles a gallon at 70 mile an hour. Uh, fuel pressure and then air fuel ratio. So yeah, we get three, six, well, three, six, 10 different uh, stats. 11, four, three, and four. 11 stats, so that's pretty handy. A lot of information there. Um, I'm sure they make a bigger one or a bigger display because it would be cool to, it's kind of hard to read. And you're just glancing at it. We need to mount her somewhere so that I can uh, see where we're going on the road. But yeah, it really looks pretty good. All right, I think we're gonna wrap her up for the night and uh, get back at her tomorrow. Hopefully, there's no big puddles underneath this thing. Brakes work good, so maybe uh, that seal inside the uh, master cylinder sealed itself up. Probably not, but. I did find a rebuild kit upstairs in my stash, so if we got to, we can go through it. One inch bore. Keep them on hand. Probably see you tomorrow. One last update. Put her up on the hoist. Uh, you could see that the valve cover was weeping a little bit, so you can see it running down the block over there. And also, you could see where this grease zerk on this tie rod end 
just ever so slightly kiss the oil pan. So I took that Zerk out. We don't need that Zerk where we're going. And uh, turning it full ox is probably not going to happen real often. Maybe like in a parking lot or something. And it was uh, kissing this tranny cooler line too. So I adjusted that. Otherwise everything looks pretty freaking good down here. The dipstick tube is a little bit wet, but I don't know if that was from when we spilled or what, but wipe that off. And there's our vehicle speed sensor right there. I don't know what we're gonna do about that. Pop it out, maybe clean it up, take a look at it. Not much uh, we can do other than stick a new one in it. So, try that. Yeah, otherwise everything looked good. Ready to do it again. All right, I uh, just gotta hold my old man. He's running some errands today, so we're gonna try to beat him back to his place and surprise him. Otherwise, we're just gonna show up when he's there and surprise him. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully we make it there and he doesn't have to rescue us because that'll be a pretty terrible surprise. Hey, I got your car. It's broke down on the side of the road. But yeah, we did find that it was a speed sensor in the back of the transmission that was either bad or I ordered the wrong one. I found that out using the Terminator X. I was watching the uh, vehicle speed and it would like drop out below 15 mile an hour and as you were speeding up it wouldn't pick up a signal until like 25 mile an hour so that's what's pretty handy about this if you know what you're doing or even if you don't in my case you can kind of figure out what's going on with the uh, vehicle so I had one laying around in the uh, 49 Ford pickup a uh, good used one we threw that in there and uh, it shifts great uh, Topped off a couple of fluids this morning, put another 25, 30 miles on, took Mojo for a rip. He approves. Got our Terminator X system kind of mounted there. We got a bracket so I can read it and I don't have to look down at the seat. But yeah, other than that, uh, that's about it, ain't it, Duff? Yeah, this thing's pretty good. Oh, throttle cable, I got that, so we got 100% now. I haven't driven it yet. We got her, yeah, we were at 57% last night, and then we got to 200, so... Pretty excited about that. She should rip pretty good. All right, I'm gonna do this. Go see Gramps and your pal. What's that dog's name? Poppy. What a silly name for a dog, Dad. Okay, hopefully we're there when we check in next. And not on the side of the road. Well, we made her uh, 50 miles down to my parents' place. Well, we got about a mile to go. And uh, called mom. She said, Dad's not home yet. She's gonna open the door to the shop. We're gonna try to sneak this in and close the door before he gets there and surprise him. Uh, don't expect much emotion from the old man. Uh, he's got the uh, emotion of one of the statues at Easter Island, so don't expect much from him. But yeah, we made it. Hopefully we beat him there. I don't see him ahead of us or behind us, so uh, we haven't ruined the surprise yet. Yeah, this thing, uh, she works pretty good. She definitely scats a lot better with 100% throttle. So that's good. All right. We'll see you in a minute for an update. I know you two want to play here. You go play. You go play. Go play. Go pee on something. Yeah, pee on mom's flowers. Hey, in case anybody's wondering uh, what the old Jeepster is up to, it's just just sitting here hanging out needs an engine so if somebody's got a good flathead jeep engine let us know mom has no interest in the car she's gone so here's where he is at look at this he paints the starter he uh wire wheels and bead blasts the distributor looks like he's got to do the carb yet he's got the manifolds blasted look at here's what he does look at this look at the detail he takes cardboard pokes holes in it. This is a sandwich box. It's the divider from the upstairs and the downstairs. And he, uh, he pokes the bolts through and then just paints the heads. I think he said this is like, I don't know, Massey Harris or some type of green from a tractor. That's the color that's supposed to be. But yeah, he wire wheels each bolt, cleans them up with Q-tips, cleans them up with Scotch-Brite and sanding. I mean, he's got freaking everything detailed here. Except for the carburetor, obviously. But uh, I don't know if he ever found an intake manifold that's not cracked. And then he labels where, oh, he, he writes it, tapes over it, and then paints it, and then pulls the tape off so he knows where each one of these bolts go. He's an organization fanatic. But yeah, look at this 300. I mean, engine mounts are painted. You know, he didn't, uh, he painted the valve cover and then put the gaskets in. 
wire wheeled the PCV, blasted and wire wheeled the alternator, painted the pulley, painted the bolts. Oh my gosh, my old man is, is something. Like even tapes off the connections on the water pump. I think he polished this. He has way too much spare time. This is what you do in retirement. You detail 300 Buicks. I know, I think he's gonna be not happy because he's like, what am I gonna do with this engine now? I don't know, dad, sorry. He even bought this oil priming because he, he packed the uh, oil pump full of Vaseline, but also he was worried about priming it. So he bought this like pressurized priming tool system. I don't know. I couldn't break it to him that uh, we swapped the engine in his car, but yeah, he's got this Buick looking good. Um, so comment down below with what you want to see him do with this Buick. Should we put it in the Jeepster? That actually isn't a bad idea. He's got a 28 or 9 Model A Roadster that he inherited from my grandpa. It's all blown apart from the 1970s, but it's stock. You know, it's kind of hot rotted. I think he wanted to put a Hemi in it, but since this is already done. Oh, uh, he's got a 34 Ford 3 window. Well, he's actually got a couple of them. That one's supposed to get a big block. It's all done up. And he's got that 33 two-door sedan. He says he's never going to do anything with that, so I believe him. And uh, he's got that Model A Roadster. I think it would be good in that Jeepster because it needs an engine anyway. Well, that Model A Roadster would be pretty good. We got another buddy that uh, did a Model A Roadster with a 300 Buick in it. That'd be good. Put a stick behind it. Or, I guess, find him another Buick to put it in. Uh, that station wagon donor car. I know where that's at still. You could put it in that. Or, uh, yeah, I guess we could blow this thing all apart. He could put it back the way it was, and then I could go uh, find my own Chevelle or something to steal all this out of and put in. That seems like a waste. But anyway, now we... Uh, Hurry up and wait for it. Well, here he is. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully he doesn't get mad. I mean, why would he? I mean, I just ruined his car. Hashtag ruined it. Just trying to figure out where I parked. Brought your car back. Looks good. You should hear it. What's that? You should hear it. Hear it? Why? No engine. You better open. Oh, I got a code on the Suburban. Check engine light. Yeah. So I took it easy on the way home. Kept an eye. So got a four-wheel drive service. Hmm. Transfer case issues. How's the Buick engine coming? Well, there's the... I got to paint the... Intake? Intake. Got it all cleaned up finally. Got all the sludge out of it. Baked it, hot tanked it, and shot peened it. Then they faced off the manifold on the top. Hmm. Hundred and sixty dollars, but I guess gotta have it. It's a good way to ruin an engine with a crappy intake. How long have you been here? Oh, ten minutes. Where's your vehicle? Right here. What do you mean? What do you mean? Didn't you have to trailer it? No, it's on the right hand side. Slide it over. Right here. It's been a while since you opened it up. A long time. What the heck is that? The LS? Yep. Holy cow. <laughs> what transmission is that? It's got a six liter out of a 01 Chevy pickup, and it's got a 4L60E out of a like a 99 to 02. It's got hooker cast iron manifolds, three inch hooker exhaust, Holly Terminator X controller. Who did the exhaust? It's all uh, hooker brand. Oh. Holly Sniper EFI intake on it. Can't even hardly tell it's there. No. Well, you didn't have to go that far. I brought some, some tools with, just in case. I suppose. Well, that's pretty nice. Fuel gauge works. It's got a intake electric pump. Turn the key on, and you'll see that. Uh, it's got all your vitals over there. You got water temp, what gear the transmission's in, uh, lockup for the torque converter. It's got air fuel ratio, RPM, speed, oil pressure, Fuel pressure, throttle position sensor. Oh, 
Oh, it's EFI. It'll speed up and drop down. Very nice. Oh. What do you suppose it's got for gears in it? Two seventy-eights. So doesn't surprise me too much. So at about uh, seventy mile an hour, it's like sixteen fifty RPM. I was cruising seventy-five last night and pulling. That thing tells you miles per gallon. I was pulling between twenty-three and twenty-five miles a gallon. Really? Was this scratch always there? Or did I put that in it? Nope, that was there. That's a gram of dent. Oh, it was driving me nuts because I didn't remember seeing it, and I thought you were gonna kill me. I'm sure it was. Um, Grandma Lil in the garage in their apartment just before she quit driving. So this was the last car she ever drove? Oh yeah. I didn't, I thought she had, I remember the apartment but I didn't nope, remember. Nope, drove, drove this while they bought it in 66 or October 65, whatever it was. And I remember Grandpa, her man, did all the work on it. The only thing I think it ever, that I knew of, they put a water pump on that 300. Yeah, that's why I had to ask you for the transmission cross member. I didn't have one of those laying around. Uh, well, I didn't. I didn't want to ruin the surprise, so I had to. Uh, I'm guessing you got this bracket somewhere too. I had to take one from a. So I had to make that hold down. It's got a Hayden transmission cooler, frostbite radiator, and then it's got SPAL cooling fans. What does it run for temp? Steady at 200. I suppose that's the thermostat's probably a 190 or... I don't know what it is, probably right about there. This took you a while, didn't it? I had to sneak it in in between videos. I was hoping you wouldn't catch it sitting on the hoist. I saw it on the hoist. I, know I haven't seen yesterday's yet, but... I still got to do brakes, but I'm going to... Can I borrow it tomorrow? <clears throat> I'm going to drive it to Kentucky. Kentucky? It's only 850 miles one way. Yeah. You should get some miles on it before you do that. I put about 70 on it last night and 50 here, so. What's in Kentucky? Holly LS Fest. Oh, I see the connection now. Want to take it for a drive? Sure. Does it have three gears? It only shifts to overdrive and third. I need to refine the uh, shift linkage to get first and second, but yeah, it's a four speed. Four speed with a lock up torque converter, so it's kind of like a five speed. What's the power steering pump off the same donor from the pension? No, I had to, the power steering pulley would hit the uh, steering box, so I had to put a Holly. Accessory kit on the front, it's off of a Corvette, I believe. So did you do drop spindles too? No, I didn't touch the suspension. No, I think I could use some shocks, maybe a sway bar. So happy belated birthday. Thank you. Exhaust isn't too loud for you. Drives pretty good then? Yeah, very nice. Saves me a bunch of freaking headache too, but I guess I I was kind of looking forward to getting this thing on the road anyway. Very nice. It's acceptable anyway? Oh, it's way more than that. 
Yeah, I don't know if you're just used to seeing it sit with no engine in it or if that six liter weighs that much more, but it looks like it came down a little bit. Oh, I tell you what, it can't weigh much more of anything than that 300. That's a heavy engine. That intake manifold must weigh 45 pounds. What did you think of it? Do you know how emotional your husband is, right? Yes. That tells you. We got a park light out, we think, so we're going to address that. Just can't leave anything alone. Well, there you have it, folks. We took this 1966 Buick Skylark that my great-grandfather bought brand new. We stole it from my dad, told him we're gonna put brakes on it, which we still have to do, so stay tuned for that, and maybe some uh, road trip shenanigans. There's this car show called the LS Fest. Maybe we'll cruise around down to that. What do you say about that, Duff? He's not impressed because uh, he doesn't want to ride in the car for 16 and a half hours to Kentucky. But anywho, uh, we surprised my old man with it after LS swapping it. It's kind of hard to tell, but he's excited. I told you, he's a Easter Island face, you know, no emotion. But. Anywho, thanks very much for watching. Check out our other videos, check out our merch. I'm not wearing any right now because I'm on my way to work because I still got a nine to five. But yeah, if you buy enough of that merch, then maybe I won't have to go to that nine to five. Wishful thinking, right? All right, on to the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Check out our other videos. You know all the stuff. Remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done as long as you're having fun. LS swaps, they are very fun when they're done. Okay, Duff. Yeah. All right, on to the next one.